the will of Weejoss that you have gained the sight to view what I have to show to you. A story of bravery and valor, friendship and betrayal, determination and despair, awesome and adventurous. But why did the witch goddess bring you here? What purpose could she have to redirect your energies to me? Perhaps this would be a story of warning to you or a call to action. Not too long ago in the storied city of Waterdeep, deep beneath the city's surface was the ruins of the largest wizard's tower. And at the center of it, Halister Blackcook. Six heroes were called forth to finally rid the city of the dark influence of Halister and investigate the damage he had done to the weave. This is their saga. <clears throat> I bid thee greetings, barbarians and wizards, clerics and warlocks. I am Patrick, known on the beaks of birds and in other crystal balls as Patty Shakes, and I am the game master for the story. This is session 11 of Dungeons and Dragons, 5th edition, Waterdeep, Dungeon of the Mad Mage. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is an awesome adventure brought to you by Vorpal Tales. You can find Vorpal Tales on lots of places on the internet. Of course, we are on Twitch right here, right now. Consider giving us a follow or subscribe. Check out Twitter where we tweet daily at Vorpal Tales. A Facebook and Instagram where you can get great pictures of all our cast and GMs outside of the tabletop. A website, warpletales.com, where you can get all the latest news about everything we are doing and see your up-to-date calendars. A Patreon, where if you feel so inclined, you can toss a coin to us in order to make more, better, and Vorpal Tailier content. Finally, a Discord, where you can come hang out with us awesome humans and discuss all kinds of topics or play video games together. I would like to thank Wizards of the Coast for making an amazing module for us to live in for a while. Also, Roll20 for being our virtual tabletop and platform for our players to roll their dice and see the monsters that look to strike them down. Additionally, to N8 Mid for all the fantastic work he does. A thank you goes to Vinswept, a wonderful YouTube channel that has amazing music to set your adventure to. And my newest shout out goes to Love Your Rebellion, a nonprofit group that empowers marginalized groups through the arts. Please be sure to check out their website, loveyourrebellion.org. And now, dear viewers, meet Iron Shepherd Adventurers who look to rid the world of the evil ways of Halaster Blackcloak. Please state your name, where people can find you on the internet, and who you will be playing tonight. Good evening. I am Dwayne. You guys can find me on the internet at Made of Kimchi, and tonight I will be playing Densic Rathanel, the Bard Dragonborn. Oh, that would be me, huh? That's weird. Throws me off. People gone. So, hey, I'm Ever. My pronouns are they, them. And you can find me all over the internet as Changeling Ever. And tonight, I will be playing Nim, the half-sea elf, half-land elf, ex-cleric, now druid, worshiper of Elastrae, and Seychellus. And I am Eldritch Echoes, playing Cal, Master of the Arcane. And winner of Prank War 2020. Nice. Okay. Hi, I'm Tiffany, also known as Pinky. And tonight I'll be playing Izzy, the Eldritch Knight fighter, who is kind of wondering how much money did she lose last night to Shadow? Because her coin purse is feeling a little light. Too. And I am uh, Devin, online at Sword of Sullied. And... I'm playing Shadow, the rogue who is feasibly richer, but also very still upset that he didn't win. Alrighty. John's here. He can do himself. Oh, he is. Look at that. John. You are muted. Why, hello there. I am I am me, uh, and I am playing Shiraskar, daring ranger of the night. May he f live forever in my memories. Thank you, adventurers. Now, before I forget ourselves and escape for a little while into a realm of magic and fantasy, here in the world today, many people are struggling with very real matters and combating their own monsters. December is a month that brings awareness to many important things, including AIDS awareness. The USA hopes to end this epidemic by 2030, but it takes all of us. Research what you can do to help today. National Human Rights, a time to honor the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, an international document stating that the fundamental rights and freedoms to which all human beings are entitled. 
These rights include freedom from discrimination, the right to equality, and the right to be considered innocent until proven guilty. The very important Black Lives Matter movement is also still going on. This is the most important period in time we are living in, and we ask that you educate yourself on topics you may be ignorant to, and work with your fellow humans to better the world. Remember, things are only impossible until they are not. Now, before you gaze further into the story of these adventurers, allow our druid to remind you of what they have already conquered and overcome. It was a dark and stormy night. No, wait a minute. Mm. No, it was a Friday night. It was the 11th of December. The year 2020. After the battle initiative is assumed, the drow with the dagger goes for shadow, but he uses his acrobatic prowess to dodge. One of the female drow, Pelinonia, insists it's her other sister we want. The Princess of Loth. Shadow reveals that she has been defeated, and Pelinonia is both surprised and pleased at realizing she is next in line for power. She introduces her present sisters to us, Silchris and Gareth, and allows us to pass through unharmed. On the way out, Nim stops to ask about Elistrae, but is instantly told not to mention her name, and they are harsh with them. They then insult Shirask, and in turn, he threatens the drow matriarch, almost causing a battle. But Shadow talks him down, and we make our way. The wailing we've heard continues, and we assume it is yet another room of torture sails. However, we travel along and suddenly come upon a drow spider, a drider in agony from a noise. Nim attempts to communicate, but he can't hear them. Shiraz casts silence, and the drider begins to shed tears, slowly removing his hands from his ears, and creeps up into the dark of the cave ceilings out of sight. Down the tunnels, we arrive to the river that can lead us to Skullport, and cross it to continue the path. On the river crossing, Cal regales Shiraz about the Bolet, a land shark that is found in these caves, and Shiraz instantly wonders why he ever came into the caves to begin with. We avoid an encounter with some cavemen, which look more like trolls than a Neanderthal, only to encounter three sea hags literally older than the seas themselves. The main sister tricks Densic into drawing from the deck of minor things, and the bard is then cursed into losing his voice. Cal attempts to spell magic to fix the curse, but it doesn't work. He then casts Dispel Curse, which works perfectly and Densic is humbled by his terrifying experience. The hags offer Nim help to heal the rift between the drow and the elves, but Nim turns down the offer because the price may have undermined the entire reason Elastrae had picked them in the first place. Going back to the river, we go in the direction of Skullport. Using up our time on our tensor's floating disc just in time, we run into a skeleton gondolier with a rowboat that is carved all over with realistic eyes. We climb into the boat and it takes us to our destination. During our river tour, Nim's perceptions catch a drow archery attack and we safely pass. We then also pass a fortress, thankfully, without incident. Finally, we arrive at Skullport and we each pay the ferryman before leaving the gon gondola. Gondola? Gondola. Yes. Gondola. We cross paths with a goblin who gives us directions to the closest inn. At the inn, the barkeep is a half drow woman that Nim is curious about. The Vorpal Vagabonds rent rooms and then later join the bar on the first floor to have some camaraderie betwixt themselves. Nim makes their way over to learn of the barkeep's story, and the two end up flirting successfully. Nim gaining an invitation to the barkeep's room after the barkeep's work is done. During the merriment, Shadow sneaks up to Cal's room and attempts to get a watery, non-lethal revenge, only to be foiled by Cal's illusion unbeknownst to the tabaxi. I still Perfect. feel like I smashed him with water. It's all that matters. Yeah, uh, yeah, you, 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 Shadow, think that you got on top of this since, no. 
whether or not Cal will reveal this is up to him. But. All right, perfect. Yes, so uh, we ended the night with uh, water being splashed everywhere and uh, everyone finding their respective beds for the night. Um, I guess the only question is, Nim, which bed did which bed did you choose? A non-binary person doesn't kiss and tell. Fair. Eyebrows, eyebrows. So everyone is able. Everyone is able to wake up the next morning and uh, go. Uh, you know, at whatever times you would want to wake up, if you're an early riser or not. Um, the result is the same. You would all meet at the table and uh, be able to eat a meal together uh, that is served up by uh, Kalal, the, the bartender. <clears throat> As she's serving, uh, you know, many plates of it's just basic food, so it's kind of just like porridge and bread um, and a little kind of uh, protein of some sort. Um, not quite sure what exactly it is. It's, she, she's a very good bartender and she ha- makes really good f- drinks, but it's not one of those bars that has really good food as well. <clears throat> she's kind of sliding the plates around, placing them all in front of all of you. So, uh, she kind of just, you know, you know, acknowledges everyone and gives uh, Nim the slyest of winks. Uh, hope everyone got a good night's sleep last night. Um, uh, looks like you're down here to what we like to call on Skullport, go in the distance as far as traversing dark deeper down the dungeon. But unfortunately, uh, it looks like you picked a bad time to come to Skullport. Uh, there's a new incursion from the Drow House that likes to, that keeps thinking they can uh, take power down here. Uh, Xanathars always keep them in check, and they will for sure. But they've sealed off the Sargoth, so there's no, for right now at least, there's no leaving Skullport. So, on all intents and purposes, you're stuck. I'd recommend you explore the city though. Uh, Senathar's been pumping a lot of money into it. A lot of shops are reopening. A lot of places are becoming to be restored to their former glory. I'm not saying you're not going to find some weird people out there, because you will, but you might find purpose out there. Anyways, and she kind of, like, she looks at the meal she's serving you, and she's like, listen, uh, I know adventurers like to have a little, something a bit heartier. Uh, to stab people. It's no good, you know, cast a magic on an empty stomach, but uh, if you want something more significant, uh, there is a restaurant in town you can go to. It's called the Worm's Gullet. Other than that, uh, if you're looking for anything in particular, I can probably let you know where it is. Or if uh, you'd rather just explore, there's that too. Uh, let me know before you guys head out either way. Um, because of the inconvenience, I'll, I'll knock 10% off your charge for tonight for tonight's rooms. Well, that is very thoughtful. Thank, uh, th- thank you very much. Can I, uh, just, can I have an ale? It always helps me get rid of these uh, headaches. She, the she kind of looks you up and down. She's like, I, you look a lot you look a lot greener today than you did last night. I'm not uh, saying something. Just a little. I mean, I am very green to start off with. You are correct. And uh, just like while she's saying that quip, she has like gracefully like leaned over the bar, poured out the tap, filled up the glass, and it's back in front of you. If you guys need anything else, just holler. It's Kyle L. And she swoops to the next table, dropping off more plates. You realize that there's one option on the menu, what you guys got. there. There's not a variety here. It's porridge and bread and protein for everyone. You guys are too quick learners. I don't know. I don't know. Love it teaches you me too. to ever to play a game with you guys. 
Hey, sure ask. It was a great game. Great game. Uh, it was I don't know what you're doing. My coin purse. I don't know what you're talking about either, Patty. I'm eating bacon and eggs. One can choose to believe one's own illusions. It looks and smells like bacon and eggs to the whole table. It's true. It's true. <laughs> a little past the digitation, some illusion magic. It certainly looks like that. It certainly smells like it. You put it in your mouth. It doesn't quite taste like it. Oh, yeah, it I does. I have level two illusions now. Oh, okay. Well, do you do that for the whole group, or are you going to just be greedy for yourself? Uh, everyone except... Shadow. That's weird. <laughs> I don't know, man. I guess I ran out of uses. You're, like, about to put it in your mouth and just, like... It, no, his, his, his looks like it, but doesn't taste like it. But no one else says anything, so you wouldn't know unless someone says it. No. Shadow just looks at the food and looks how delicious it is. Gets really excited. Shadow takes a bite. <laughs> looks at everyone else's faces and seeing how they're enjoying everything. Oh, this is delicious. Thank you. Bacon Reaches into eggs. his pack and takes out iron rations. It's pretty cool how she made a special breakfast just for us. Thanks, Nim. Uh, Shadow, that's very rude. Why aren't you eating the food? Don't, don't disappoint our hostess. Even where I come from, that's considered uncouth. And you can see he lifts his plate up and just, like, starts swallowing egg and bacon. Wow. Shadow just stares. And then he looks over at the wizard. Looks back at the food. Looks back at the wizard. <laughs> and just keeps eating his ration pack. I'm totally not judging you. I'm totally not judging you. <laughs> See that you are not happy with what you have in front of you. And I take it. <laughs> and then I eat it. <laughs> The, sh the, sh the shadow I protest. Say, I say absolutely nothing as he takes it, and when he eats it, and he still tastes, and it still tastes good to him, I just look back at the wizard. I'm not over yet, Grum Grumble. Did, did you want it. some of mine, Shadow? Shh. And like, is he offers, and like, it's just like a rice no. porridge with like fried eggs and bacon on it. She just kind of like offers the bowl, like half eaten. Back to my ration pack. <laughs> Shadow pulls out like super dried jerky and like yep. some raisins, a little bit of like hard cheese. It mm. looks like it tastes at least. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What do we want to do today? I want to offload what we've got. What do we have to offload? Treasure. You wouldn't loop, know about it. Loop. <laughs> it's true, Shadow. Do you it's want to share with the, the guy that wasn't there for the other rooms? <laughs> <laughs> offload the treasure. I mean the Nothing. dead bodies. Nothing he'll, we he'll get his dead bodies. He'll get his part. Maybe. <laughs> 40 gold pieces. What do you know? That's all oh, you got. Oh, jeez. What? 40 gold? You're so generous. <laughs> oh, I, uh, it was, uh, no, I don't. Uh, be good for a couple more nights, I suppose. Uh, do we have any weapon shops around here? I would like to see if they had a new crossbow. I need to find a library. What a library you read? Yes! <laughs> Why is that so funny? What do you need to read for? I need to learn sign language. Ah, the noble endeavor. Why are you learning sign language now? Because there's a pretty you... little half orc waiting for me out <sighs> in the yawning portal. And. And well, she, she's 
speaks sign language. So I need to learn so I can talk to her. Oh. And ask her on a date. I was very excited about the learning sign language part until the reason popped up. You realize it's not so that you can understand him. No. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not an attempt to learn even like a part of Thieves Can't. No. No, no, no. Shadow was getting really excited that his, you know, his little sister Izzy was doing something for it. No, not him. No. Okay, so we got a library trip. We've got an. an smithy slash armory slash weapons shop trip. Well, I I mean, I have no direct plan. I wish to walk these streets and merely chronicle our adventures. Okay. However, we got a random however, chance I, trip. I do, I do have a an idea of Perhaps I may find a seeker, or not a seeker, a seer in this town. I may have answers to the interesting supernatural experience that I witnessed before this adventure. Okay. Random chance slash flight <clears throat> fortune teller. Okay. Kel uh, has no goal here except for at some point when Shadow's in front of us, I'm going to perfectly recreate Tidal Wave and hit him with it and then blame Nim and be like, what'd you do that for? That was rude. There's been enough soaking each other going on in this party. <laughs> That's my only goal. You can decide when that happens, Patty. That's so okay. nice. That's beautiful. That's amazing. That's that is. Cool, Nim. <laughs> Nim, anywhere in particular you want to go? or? Um, actually... I was considering something like so we're we're basically down here indefinitely, yes? The uh, for the time being, yes. Uh, what uh, Callow kind of told you was the Sargoth, which is the one way out of Skullport, has been blocked off um, due to you know drow getting close, and there's been they have in the past tied to attempt to take over Skullport, so they're just being overly cautious. They're going to go ahead and seal it off not let anybody else in or out and uh, kind of show up the defenses. So until the immediate threat is over, yeah, you're stuck here. So it could be a day, it could be a week. Not sure. So then my plan is I'm going to look up more on the history of the drow and the elves, and I'm going to begin my unification. A library probably a good place to start. Yeah. <gasps> Library buddies! Uh, so, do you guys want to go all together as a group to each of these locations? Do you want to split off uh, and everyone go to their separate spots? Uh, it's up to you guys. There's one thing that I'd like to do that is going to be completely separate from the group. I want to see if I can somehow uh, make up that identity or an identity for the uh, crown wearing side of me okay oh. all right so uh are you any of you guys gonna ask directions to any of your individual wants or is does everyone plan to roam the city together is everyone going separate kind of give me what, what's your guys's travel plans here Trosco knows exactly where to go okay oh, sure i does. was gonna have uh, izzy ask Kello. Um, okay so you fly you flag uh you flag her down she comes like what is it, sweetie? Uh, yeah, I was kind of wondering, do we have like a, a library or like a, a place where you could like uh, learn, you know, some stuff? There is a particular book I'm looking for. I'm really hoping the library has it. Sure. Uh, you'll be wanting the Athenaeum. The Athenaeum? The Athenaeum. It's run by some real, real devouts. Uh, it's a little bit, re bit more religious than I'd like for a library, but um, you should be fine. Cool. Thank you. She does no hands over and she, a and gold she, piece as thanks. It, she just kind of waves off. Hmm, directions are free here. Uh, I would, and, and she just kind of gives you uh, loose directions to how to get there. That's the most direct path. Thank I, you. I, I flag her down as well and say, uh, a records department? For like she, nobility uh, and stuff. She eyes you. Okay. 
she rolls really high on her insight. She's like, uh, sure. Uh, what shield would, I think I know what she'd be looking for. Uh, and she gives you some directions. She's like, the shop you're looking for is called the Poisoned Quill. Thank you. Thank you very Not much. No problem. I, I, I hand her 10 gold pieces of silence. Oh, wait, she, sorry. She, sorry. She, she, it's only like 50, five bucks, so 50 gold pieces for silence. She, she just nods. <clears throat> and when, as you're handing it to her, she's like, uh, remember, the sign's not going to be so much a name as it will be a symbol. Gotcha. Anybody Wait. else looking for something specific in town? Shrask will go up there, go go up to her, and just like whisper. It's like, oh, she's at she's at the, she's at the table with you guys right now. Yeah. Where 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 are the armor shops? Where are the weapon shops? At? She's very puzzled as to why you're whispering, but she's like. You'll want to go see Rod Krieger. She's she's the armorer. Or yes, yeah, she she's the armorer. Thank you. By the, and she gives once again loose directions. She's like, you literally can't miss her. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Don't don't tell these other guys. I didn't know where to go. Okay. Okay, no problem. She, like once her ass turns back around, she kind of just looks at you guys like. <laughs> what? We overpaid <laughs> for him. No, we didn't. He was he's totally worth the 40 gold I paid for him. She's now reevaluating how she thinks about you guys because she now thinks that this guy's a slave or something. <laughs> I paid for his freedom. Oh, oh, okay. You're free. Okay, you're freedom. I, okay. That, that's better. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, he follows well. us everywhere. Mm. It's like a puppy dog. Pretty much. Only he's teaching boring. him about friends. Trask is feeling very alienated now. A valuable lesson. Well, and she just kind of goes back to serving everyone again. Hmm. Is that, is that how I come off as a puppy? With scales. It's a not pu- exactly a, a an puppy insult with to scales. Rask and, and green skin. Green skin. I don't remember if you answered the question. Does your arm grow back if it gets chopped off? <gasps> Was that insulting to ask? I'm so sorry. Yes, it currently is. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Kitchen or like a, a bakery where I can do like a special request for some cookies. I kind of she hears you say that, and she just kind of shouts back over to you. Oh, yeah, we have a bakery. Sweet like ants. Thank you! You're just like, sweet like ants? Oh, sweet like ants. It's a weird name. So, so, so what What parts of me are puppy dog-esque? I really, like, this is, this is bugging me now. What a... Your love. My, my love. Yes. It's unconditional. Un- and yep, it's wonderful. And mm-hmm. you're funny. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I want to pet you sometimes, but I know that's really inappropriate because you're not supposed to touch people without asking. Yes, that is bad. That is a bad thing. Do not touch without asking. Thank you. Consent is number one. This consent is everything, darling. I think that's the mm. first time you ever called me darling. Yes, I don't know what came over me. It was very weird. It's almost like you have an alternate personality. All right, group errands or individual errands? Densic will merely follow yep. since he doesn't really know what he's looking for. I think it's going to be group except for my bit. Okay, uh, just let me know whenever you want to kind of slink off. Uh, slink we can off. do your, your other thing. All right, cool. So uh, where does the group, which errand does the group want to do first? Of course, we go to the armory first. Okay, not a problem. Armory it is. Alphabetical almost. Armory. Yes, it starts with A and is therefore the most important. <laughs> 
Also, Strask mm-hmm. is, is is very keen on this. That's okay. Okay. Uh, you start making your way through town, following the directions uh, that Kalal gave you, and uh, as you're traveling uh, through, uh, you pass uh, the other bar that was. Um, given to you when you first entered town by the goblin, uh, the Black Tankard. Uh, and it indeed looks quite shabby and run down. Uh, the sign is literally just and it takes like your guys is kind of, you're like wait wait, wait a second. There's just a rather large tankard that's been like burned and scorched that's just nailed on top of a door. And you're like is that and then you see like someone drunkenly stumble out at nine o'clock in the morning. You're like, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, no, that that's, that definitely is. That's that's the place. They look like they have worse ale than where we came from. And there's a, a like a minotaur bouncer just kind of standing outside, his large arms crossed, and just <clears throat> as you guys all walk by and eyes you, uh, keep moving throughout, uh, keep moving through the city, and. It- uh, when he goes, <laughs> trust me. Rah! Does he even does he even flinch or react? Is he compliments the Minotaur's horns? No, this is greeting apparently. Uh, and you're able to uh, you start hearing the sounds uh, of a hammer hitting metal, uh, hot metal going into water, the hiss, the, uh, <laughs> the sound, and then it before you can even see it, you feel the heat. Uh, of a well-run forge and oh, okay. you turn a corner and this it kind of the city kind of opens up and there's a very large kind of almost what used to be a market square maybe and you're right Cal is correct there is no way possible you would have missed seeing Rod Krieger as she is a fire giant and the fo- like the hammer she wields is the size of Shirosk and she just brings it down and she she looks to be making perhaps like a ballista or something like that. It's a very large uh, piece of siege weaponry. And she sees you all approaching. She kind of just like wipes her brow and keeps hammering. Boom! And like these are thunderous uh, sounds that are raining down. Like it's you, each time there's a slight ringing that lasts in your ears after each strike, just to be replaced with the boom of another full strike. It, she does not like cease or slow down or anything when she's as you guys approach. Oh my god, it's a giant lady. We can feel the heat from here. This is oh, this is this is very comforting. I haven't felt the I haven't felt this warm in ages. Oh, it just kind of like right stretches now. his back. Is, is he? Don't forget your um, work. Girlfriend, back hey. in. The- you you so have to like, you have to like shout to be able to hear each other. Easy! Don't forget about your girlfriend. It's called window shopping. And like every five words is drowned Flip out it, by the hammer window. strike. Boom! My so sh- eyes are the window to our soul. So, so sh- Boom. Trask finds it. Finds it like a. Uh, a little piece of like warm stone and just sits down. Do you have anything for sale? Boom. Do, do you have anything Boom. for sale? Shadow sits somewhere far enough away that he's not too warm to watch the show that is Shiraz trying to get this lady's attention. I don't think she can hear you. Boom. I don't, I don't want to disrupt her. She's very, very in, in, into her work. And fi- like another like ten minutes or so, of this go by. You kind of you're all just like twiddling your thumbs. Rasta like, keeps attempting several different ways to get her attention. And finally, when the piece she had been working on, she sticks it back into the forge to get the last little heat on it. You have five minutes before this was hot enough for me to work on. Oh, I, 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 thank you. Do you have anything for sale? She just gestures to the several armor and arms racks. 
best in Skullport. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm going to take a look. Do they have price tags on them? She just is nonplussed by that. I'm just going to go take a look at your armor. Just going to wander, okay. wander, wander over. Okay. Uh, you're surprised because, you know, you see the tool she is working with and you're like, well, this will be all for... J- oh, wait, no. That that could fit me and that could fit me. And and you see just about any armor uh, mundane-wise you can think of is there. She's got to have more hammers than just the big one. <laughs> Like it's got it's got to be hard working with a hammer that size, uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, like do I see anything there I could use? Well, besides like you know, any any mundane armor or armament ar- armament you can think of is there. Uh, mundane, so non magical. Do they have like, any heavy crossbows or anything like that? Oh yeah, better? several. Uh, lots. There's just generic style ones that you would give to your everyday infantryman or everyday archer up on top of a keep wall to ones that look like they would belong to, you know, a rich noble who's never gone hunting once in their life, but they would hang up above the fireplace. No, no, that's fair. That's fair. Are any of them like plus one? They're all all mundane. All mundane. You do notice that there is like a shop that she is like so like the way it's laid out is there's like rows and rows of arms and armament then there's her giant forge that she's working at that has several different uh uh fires and kilns and workbenches and anvils and hammers and just all all the tools of the trade and then there is like kind of a a smaller looking uh house for lack of a word better word that she is working in front of and it kind of like the way everything is laid out, you wouldn't be able to like go into that house without her being able to see anyone approaching it. All right. Uh, so like, there's 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 the normal stuff, and then possibly like there's more in the house. You don't know. You just know that like that's de- that's definitely her property still. Right. It could just be her living. It could just be her home. Oh, oh that's good. I- I have some ver- rather. Sh- oh, she's working. Okay, I'll stop until I'll wait until she's done. Another about ten minutes go by, and she dips it in the water, <laughs> pulls it out, examines it. She puts it down, pulls off the large blacksmith gloves she was using, puts them down. Once again, wipes her brow, sets the hammer to the side, sees that you're still looking. Something you need help with still. Uh, do you have any other uh, crossbows other than the ones you have here? What is wrong with these? Oh, nothing. I do. I do have my. Uh, uh, no, no, nothing is wrong with them. I'm just wondering if you had uh, anything more I could uh, could could see or purchase. How much gold do you have? Uh, uh, currently over five hundred. <laughs> okay, I'm not kidding. <laughs> you could barely afford one of these pieces with that. This is okay. Right. Well, thank you. Very my much. works are my works are masters. I I can I can tell they are they they are of of genuinely very nice quality, and I'm a, a bit jealous. I cannot afford many of them. But uh, uh, thank you. You thank could you. work for it. What, uh, what needs to be done? Mine. You have big back, strong hands for one so small. Mine. I, I, I think she's saying you belong to her now. No, mine. Yes, and she, for she like she like goes over to one of like, and the pick, with a pickaxe. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I, I understand. She's a. <laughs> it, it's okay. I, uh, yeah, sure. I will uh, happily work, work it off with you. Three years. Oh. Three years. <laughs> oh, Three geez. years. You can have any piece you want. But, but that means he would have. Cal slips up behind you. Ask what your job would be. 
if she's going to teach you how to use the forge like she does. Let's sentence trail off. You'd get more than a new set of armor and weapons out of it. What, what would my job be, per se? I give you pick, you mine. If I'm not tired at end of day, you learn forge. <laughs> Densic slaps him on the back. Goodbye. That's a good deal. <laughs> Already have two. Need third. <laughs> Already have two. Need needs three. God, that's fucking tempting as hell. You should make sure that she didn't go through two and need the third. Does anyone speak make giant? Sure they're alive. <laughs> uh, Not I. I no. didn't get that with a language. It is a language. Mm-hmm. She she yells in giant, uh, and it's like very just like her common. It's terse and to the point. About ten seconds come by, and you just hear like two sets of feet just bolting, running as fast as you can. Uh, they come around the corner. Sir Rask, you recognize these two people? They used to be in your adventuring party. Uh, what? Hello, what a, 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 I thought you were dead. Shurask! And they both run up and kind of like, do like they each take half of you and embrace you. Oh, you did. Uh, okay, we thought uh, you were dead. No, I ran away. I was a bitch. I, I took the fuck out. I, I just left. Uh, you weren't, you weren't, you know, running away. Per, it was a tactical. Listen, we were getting swarmed. By those skeletons, there was no other choice but to get out. It was. It, it, I, I see what you're saying. I advanced toward the rear. Yes. Yeah. The, uh, I, I, I can't believe you made it to safely the scoreboard. We got separated. It looks like you were running back towards one of the previous levels. We somehow got linked up to the river. Then we found this crazy boat that was manned by a skeleton, and it took us to scoreboard. Oh, we were so uh, uh, we had a uh, we had a similar experience. Uh, one one question though, I would ask you: What do you think? Like, if you were to buy me right now, what would you say my monetary value would be? They kind of like look at each other, like thirty gold pieces. Ha! Fair, fair, I suppose. Here, and they just they go, ha, 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 no, no, Shirask, you're worth more than gold to us. Oh, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, I, do, I, I would like to uh, f- finish up here uh, with uh, with everyone. But yes, I would lo- I would love to come back and uh, learn a uh, mine for you. That would be fantastic. Start tomorrow, six a.m. Bright and early. That's fa- fantastic, and this this warmth will keep my belly very warm. She goes back to like, she is not hammering, so you're able to have a discussion. But they kind of lean into you. They're like, uh, she says six, but being on time is late. You want to be here like five thirty? Oh, fair, uh, fair, fair. They're just do like you want to, this. Do, do, this, you know, like this, like this sucks, but like we are learning a lot. She's uh, she seems like a uh, strict but good person then. They look at each other like, good? Eh, but, eh, knowledgeable? Eh. Uh, when, you know the old stories where giants and dwarves would get into wars over just because of the fact they would argue about who was the best smiths? <laughs> they, kind of, they kind of look at each other like, we're with the giants on this one. She's unbeatable. Fair, fair. No, I, I, I look forward to... Uh, I, I look forward to wor- working with you again. Fantastic. Well, take your last day as a free person. Oh, Lord. This, uh, okay. Three years starting tomorrow. <clears throat> well, until tomorrow then. And they're in, because, like, at this point, she's just, like, now side eyeing you guys. And they're like, we've got to go back to work. And they just, they oh, fair, don't, fair. don't, keep they don't walk or they, like, like full on sprint back behind the house and you hear the and now that she's not hammering or working you can hear the tick 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 
of pickaxes hitting ground. Well, well I'll see you, see you all tomorrow. Finish the day out. Uh, did anyone want to, you know, did anyone else want to browse or perhaps uh, if they have enough money, they might not get the whole huh, poor, no pores treatment. Look around, yes. Purchase Deno. Maybe. Look around. Yeah. Also, yes. Purchase. I... No. Okay. Yeah, you look around. Uh, Izzy, you see like this, this sword that like you can just tell like it you pick it up you kind of like do some practice swings with it you can like hear it cut the air it is so sharp you're just like oh that's so pretty though no cookie cutter i love you i would have named you seven one nim you go around and there's actually a row for bows um and you pick one up and it's just this light and it's lighter and springier than your current bow. And you're like, ooh. And you just like looking at you like, no, no, maybe in a past life or a future life. <laughs> All right. Where are you going to next? You go to the library next. Yeah. I was yeah. also kind of thinking of like maybe Shadow should sell his stuff first so everyone has more money so that if we come into cross something later, we'll actually have the money to purchase that item. Well, Shadow will have money to purchase. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say like we won't have that money, That's but true. Shadow will. All right. Okay. Uh, Shadow, uh, you would be able to know that a town run by Xanathars would for sure have an appraiser slash fence kind of person uh, you could go talk to. All right. Um, so you kind of like you kind of you guys uh, from here you're kind of like uh, okay we don't we didn't get directions to that person so you kind of uh, roam the city a little bit. Sure, um, I'm sure. If we look for a building that has a line with people holding random items in their hands. <laughs> <hand. laughs> We're looking uh, for the the pawn shop. Yeah. <laughs> You guys kind of wander about, and now now the day is progressing. Uh, more and more shops are opening up, and people are starting to come up and wake up. The citizens are out and about, and Skullport start, starting to show a little some signs of life now. Um, are we on like what, what would you consider like the main boulevard? Uh, no, not yet, because. The, the armory is going to be kind of on the outskirts of town so that those loud booms aren't in the middle of everything. Uh, yeah. um, so you're, you're making your way from there. So you're not quite in the like the heart of the city yet. Okay. Um, so you kind of you walk around for a little bit and you actually come across uh, a um, what looks to be a brewery? Perhaps, um, any with, anybody with any dwarven knowledge, we can tell this is a dwarven distillery uh, that you stumbled across, uh, and a nice fancy kind of uh, for anyone who can read dwarven in dwarven rooms, very like fancy kind of calligraphy style. Uh, it says Gaiud's Distillery. If anybody wanted to stop, I cannot read that. <laughs> Anybody hmm. who can read Dwarven be able to tell to the rest of the group. It oh, hey, this, this says this is a distillery. I also cannot read that. Nope. I do not have Me either. But I don't think go. anyone does. Wait, can not a magical Dwarven? language, Cal. Don't have it. That's wait, wait, wait. I have comprehend language. Would you like to use it? Nice. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> you guys are all about to pass it, and Izzy's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Guys, this says this is a distillery. Who wants to get drunk? Day drink, anybody? Day drink. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. Perhaps we should I stop in. 
I could I could go Since for a Since they've pint. decided to stop in, this is where I will sneak off. Okay. This is where this is where Shiraz will get his uh, uh, liquids from today. <laughs> all right, we'll get to you in a second, Shadow. So you guys all walk in with the promises of maybe some free samples. Uh, once again, the building and the distillery itself are all very much dwarven crafted and styled. Um, so very fine, very um, somewhat purpose driven, but still have a nice kind of aesthetic to it. Um, and you know that if smithing isn't their number one talent, then brewing is their number one talent for dwarves. But as you walk in, uh, it's kind of like one of those styles where it's a bar up front, and then you can see large double doors behind the bar, and through the and they kind of are one one's propped open, the other one has a window. You can see the large brewing vats behind there, uh, and the guy behind the bar is actually human. Well, howdy! Welcome, y'all. What is this strange is, accent? This, I've never heard that before. This is Guides. What? Where are you from? You, you, have, from, an, you, you have an I'm accent from one, I have not heard in many moons. I'm from one of the northern nations. Your accent is beautiful. Well, thanks. What, what is your recommended uh, spirit here? Well, we brew three kinds here for uh, all the restaurants. Well, <laughs> I say restaurants for the Uno restaurant and the uh, two the, the, the two uh, taverns. Uh, we brew all the, and we, we make the Amberjack. We make a goat's head ale and uh, for because the proprietor of the Black Tanker demands something cheap. We make something called Worm Whiz. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it either. The first two are good. I, yep. I'm gonna uh, throw it on. I, 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 how how much will a gold piece buy me? Well, first one's free, y'all. He came straight to the source. Oh hell he yeah! Pours out uh, a, like a little sampler for each of you. This here's the amberjack. Drink on up, it's sherry. And you, all, most of you did have at least one glass of this last night. Um, but you take you take a drink, and it is it's even better. Like it's you know it's the same. If any of you have ever been to a, a brewery before, or uh, or a distillery, and had the product there, it's just something about it, it tastes better. Uh, uh, it's always better from the source. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, uh, yes, and he's just kind of ta- like talking, and you can tell that he doesn't get a lot of pe- like you know casual people here. Either they're here to buy casks for the restaurant or the tavern, or for their personal use. He doesn't get a lot of like newcomers. Yep. So my name is Guyed. I know what you're thinking. You ain't a dwarf. And yeah, you're right. I ain't no dwarf. Well, I was I was thinking uh, I know I know exactly like one drinking. I was wondering if you could teach me more. That could be arranged. Uh, Absolutely. I would like one day to make this place kind of a gathering spot of sorts. You know, like-minded people with open thoughts and revolutionary ideas coming together, having a couple pints, thinking about how they can change the world for the better. I mean, be a- I, I mean, <laughs> I think that um, I think this would be a good place for that. Of course, we also have some, you know, games to play, you know, and drinking. Of- yes, sure. Oh, well, yeah, of course. I mean, that's what we're serving here. It's how we, it's how we, it's how we keep the lights on, so to speak. I mean, I, I shall teach you the ways of my homeland. They are very enlightened. Oh, no, of I course. you can learn a lot. No, I, I I know the kind of games your folk play. Uh, it's, I believe it's called Pieces. Yes, yes, yes. And he, and he proceeds to play Pieces. Like, he just kind of, he, he very yeah. easily just, like, like, across, like down like down the bar from you, just, like, long bounces mm-hmm. it and gets in your glass. I believe you need a drink. How, how the hell are all of you better at this than me? <laughs> So what you're trying to say is you're thinking of opening up an athletics tavern? Uh, well, I mean, of course you could watch. Or we'd, we'd have ways to magically scry 
some of the local events from around town. But no, I was thinking more of a open air area where uh, people could bring their pets and uh, you'd be able to sit around and have a couple drinks with everyone and it'd be one of those uh, real kind of, I believe the, the school of thought's called liberal thinking places. Indeed, where you come to congregate and share your different yeah, ideas exactly, and, so, exactly, and celebrate exactly. the differences. Exactly. That's all. Which I, I will definitely tell you all of the ways of my people. They are incredibly good. Uh, you can learn a lot. Um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and like, I want to set up a table and like try and do a trick shot with a court with a, with a piece and it's probably I'm probably going to fail horribly but I want to get a table bounce it off the table and try and land it in the cup. All right, give me a uh, give me an acrobatics check for that. <clears throat> well, this is going to end horribly but we're going to try Bosch, anyway. Yeah, Boss tries to set that up just like yeah, well, you know, it, it's just hard around here trying to get people to take me seriously cuz you know, they see a human running a doors bar and they think, well, Clearly, he just kind of bought this at the right price or something, but I've got skills, clearly. And he, you know, gestures to the drink you guys are drinking. And, you know, I'd like to kind of do things. I was thinking about making, like, seasonal kind of things. You know, from where I'm from, they have, uh, they make ales they call bitters. Uh, and they also have different styles as well. They got dark beers, dark ales they call uh, purters. And uh, they've got... Uh, a lot of a lot of different colored ales that they make. And I just really think that we can make a whole a whole culture here. Maybe I am looking. I, I'm looking for investors. If you know, I think you feel like investing. How much to invest? How much? However much you can offer. You know. You know. If it's just if it's just a couple gold pieces, we'll call it more of a donation than an investment. But you know, if you want to pony on up and you know throw down a couple hundred gold. 500 gold pieces? Oh, well, we can get you in here as an investor for sure. I give him 500 gold pieces. Slap slap my britches and call me Sally. We got ourselves our first investor. Indeed. We'll have to or, or you'll have to find your ingredients to those other ales. I wish to try them greatly. I know. we can, That's the, I, Of course we can experiment with what we put in the ales. All kinds of things. There is a low, any kind of just down the street a little yonder, there is an apothecary. We can maybe strike up a deal with them and uh, look about making, you know, not quite potions per se, but uh, maybe uh, drinks that imbue you with a bit of bit of this or that. Oh, and, uh, indeed. Clever thinking. I will, uh, this I investment's imagine. already paying off. Well, I got myself a couple good ideas here. I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave it up to you, but I will want to try everything you produce. I think that can be arranged. Does anybody else want to get on the ground floor of this amazing adventure we're going to put ourselves on here? Actually, I, I'm interested. How do you feel about uniting the drow and the elves? This kind of looks seems like, well, I've heard bigger pipe dreams than that. So, I mean, if you think you can do it, by all means, feel feel free. I don't think I, I don't just think I can do it. I am meant to do it. Oh, what makes you, th- what makes you say that? Well, you see, I was originally a long time ago born in the ocean and um, my mom met my dad before I was born, obviously. And my Nan dad was given a quest the- by a holy person. Oh yeah, that, I suppose I should have just started there, huh? Partner, you got yourself a real interest in life there. But as much as I want investors, uh, I'm thinking you might be a little bit more interested. There is, and he kind of points, and he's like, T- towards the middle of town, uh, back when the drow ran Skullport, uh, one of their nobles had a big old house in the hill. It's, it's empty now because locals think it's cursed. Uh, you know, what with loath and all that and people worrying about being dragged into the abyss but if you're not so scared of that you could maybe uh, take that place and uh, convert it and do whatever you want with it I mean it's practically free because everyone thinks it's cursed but you know we ain't got no temple here if you wanted to you know maybe set one of those up that sounds amazing 
I yeah. like this plan. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and save a gold Nim- pieces for, for renovating. Oh. oh, thank you. I appreciate all of this information very much. Yeah, not a problem. And he gives everyone uh, another. He's kind of giving you guys like two or three samples so far. He gives you one last one. He's like, well, I, I've got another batch I got to go check on. Uh, Sharask partner. I, you know, I call a lot of people partner. Partner. Part Sharask, my partner. Because oh, yeah, yes. are you I, I, obviously, I mean, it looks like you're planning on staying in town for a little while. Uh, three years. Yes. Oh. So, any specific reason why three years? Uh the uh, giantess is uh, uh, I am oh. helping her and she is uh, going to teach me some of her craft uh huh well good luck with that I wish you better yes. luck than the last uh, couple other people who took that I think their bones can still be found uh, out in the graveyard somewhere from her working them to death and whatnot. but you know you look pretty hardy Shr- Shrask is a mighty warrior yes yeah, no, I'm sure it's going to work out way better for you than it did for them. Uh, it'll mm-hmm. be fine. I, as long as I have ale at the end of the day, everything will be fine. Not a problem. All right, well, uh, is there, I'm going to go. Is there, oh, sorry, is there a fighting pitch in town? <laughs> you bitch, your sweet bippy. You ain't. Hey, this, the, the is, fist- this is. This is Skullport, sir. Uh, there's one way people settle their differences because there ain't no law. <laughs> So, uh, fisticuffs or uh, armed combat? Oh, fisticuffs. We ain't looking to kill each other. Just, okay. you know, beat each other senseless every now and then. Uh, what you're going to want to look for is uh, there's a, there's an old tavern at that once the, uh, the Black Tankard and the uh, and the uh, and the Flag and the Dragon became the top two destinations. This one kind of ran out of business, but the, the owner had enough foresight to go ahead and just rip out all the furniture dig a little bit of pit in the middle there and uh, make the towns what you would call, I guess, a Thunderdome. Uh, it's called the Bat's Roost. Mm, oh, I'll have to go. Uh, I will go check it out and I'll see if any of my companions want to go with me. Looks at most of you, you know, not all of you. Really, Izzy's like the strongest of all of you. So he kind of looks at all of you, especially like Densick and Cal. And he's just like, yeah, no, I mean, uh, let them know you're lightweights. Don't let them put you up against any of the champs. I think oh. it's hilarious that the shortest person out of this whole group is the strongest. <laughs> Absolutely. He's just like, all right, well, y'all Fantastic. see yourselves out now. Uh, I'm going to go to the back, but, uh, you know, Skullport's got a, gra- a lot of great things for a lot of great people. Uh, I'll see y'all around, especially you, partner. Ah, indeed. He kind of just chuckles to himself, like <laughs> goes into the back. Uh, Shadow, you make your way to uh, you kind of score around a little bit, and you're able to finally make uh, a shop called. And it stands out to you because after going through the dungeon, this 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 name st- stuck in your mind. Uh, Dumathoin's jest, and you're like, that's the name of that dwarven god that all those temples we went through were made out to. And you remember that um, uh, Dumathoin was the dwarven god of mining and secrets and things like that. And you're like, this might be a good place. So you walk in and uh, there's like one or two people that are kind of uh, uh, ahead of you. And you see them kind of like they un- untie like scarves or they bring out like a little basket and they put, you know, a couple small size gems and there's a halfling that kind of just like look at him very like nonchalantly. Every now and then we'll pull out the jeweler's lens, but it's not very often. Most of the time she can just pick him up and be like. And she makes you know, an offer. Both people take her offer. It's your turn. Greetings. I'm looking for, uh, how should I put this? Uh... The appropriate paperwork for a new person that does not exist at this moment. Oh. I know where you want to go for that. That's not my department, though. That's someone else. Oh, I thought that you were saying that this was supposed to be the place. No, the, no the, you know this is the like the fence. Okay, the fence. Okay, sorry. 
when I said it was going separate, that was meaning for that first. Oh, I thought you wanted to do the fence first and then. It's the okay. Forger. I, I will okay. just uh, pretend I did not say the fence part right, or right, that part right now. Uh, and I pull out uh, the emeralds and rubies that we got uh, from our quest. Ooh, those are shiny. Yes. And I would like uh, to part with them. Okay, well, just so you know, uh, this is a guild establishment, so there is the flat rate of 15% on any appraisals. As a guild member, do I get any discount? She looks at you. Oh, for you? Okay, fine. 10%. All right. I and showed. she starts uh, eyeglass. Did I give you any values for these when I, when I gave them to you originally? Uh, you told me that they were 50 GP a piece for the uh, emeralds and 75 for the rupees. She looks at them real quick. Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. That's, and she spouts back kind of the same information. That's their worth. All right. And uh, then I pull out uh, all the carvings and religious items for Loth that we picked up along the way. Oh, someone's been a naughty boy going into temples you shouldn't be going into. <clears throat> they were uh, ransacked temples uh, specifically. Oh, my job's not to ask questions. And she starts examining yeah. those. No, I, I kind of nudge to the fact that it's this particular location's namesakes, temples that were ransacked. And this was what was involved so that they kind of get the idea that, yes, I ransacked a place that was screwing over Doolithoin. She kind of picks up your nose. She's like, oh, I have no allegiance. That's just that's just the name, sweetie. Damn, I was hoping for some extra cash from it. <laughs> she wants to examine. Did I give you a gold value? Did I give you a gold piece value on these? You said that there was a whole bunch of stuff and it was 750. Okay. Uh, she looks at it and she kind of... Ooh. She kind of, uh, she highballs a little bit. She's like, uh, I'll take care of that. It's about 900 gold pieces. That sounds fair. All right. So I pawn off all that stuff. So and then minus 10% from it. And then yeah, that's so how much gold you have. Uh, I'm braining real quick. So that's 1150. So 10% be... 115. Okay, so that'd be current spending a total of uh, 1035 gold pieces. All right, cool. How's was... you doing business? Likewise. And she gives you the precise directions uh, to um, the poison I... quill. All right, cool. I uh, move down the street, and it's a. There's. All there is is just a. Um, it's what looks to be actually someone's house. It doesn't even look like a store. Uh, but you see kind of graved into the door frame is a quill. And there seems to be like what looks like a, a green drop coming off of it. All right. Uh, before actually getting there, I'm going to just take some crazy route to avoid people following me. And in the midst of that, I'm going to put on the circlet so that I transform. Okay. So, so that only the transformed persona is seen walking into this place. Okay. Not a problem. Give me a stealth check just to make sure. Twenty-five. Sure enough, you're able to get there without being followed. You walk in, and it just kind of looks like a person's sitting room almost. Uh, there's a large curtain that leads to further in, but it's closed. And as the door opens, a small little bell rings. Sweeping through the curtain is this uh, older woman. Um, she still stands upright, and, but you can tell just in the skin, it sags a little bit. And there's some wrinkles in the corner of her eyes. She has uh, pure white hair that is uh, in a tight bun on the top of her head. Um, she's dressed very nicely, though, very fine mage's robes. Yes, what can I do for you, sweetie? Greetings, lady. I'm looking for, uh, how shall I say, the proper persona for this face on paper. Uh, 
Yes, I can conjure histories for just about anyone. What, uh, of course, how, what, what exactly you want is going to vary in your cost. I'm simply looking for a minor noble title so that I might be able to spend days lounging about in peace. Okay, minor noble human. Okay. Uh huh. Let's see. And do you have any other supporting documents for your claim? Perhaps a faked uh, deed to land or anything like that? Or will you need a full workup? Uh, the full workup, sadly. Okay, all right. So we'll have identifying papers. We'll go ahead and make a false treaty in your name to a fake nation. And do you need the nation to be a real one or can we have it be a, a made up one? That will greatly determine cost as well. Oh, it can be a made up one from far away on the other side of the world. Perfect. Okay, we'll subtract a little bit from that. And then, of course, the title itself. Okay, perfect. Uh, this full identity would come out to be 50 gold pieces. 50 gold pieces. How much for the real location? Okay, that's quite a bit more. It's almost going to triple it to 140 gold pieces. Just for the sake of accuracy, let's make it a real location. Okay. We can absolutely do that. And she puts down some human nation of some sort as you're... And she goes, one moment, dear. And she does go back through the curtains. Um, you hear her speaking in uh, arcane tongues. And she comes back out with uh, several rolled up uh, papers, each uh, with um, accompanying uh, stamps. She also brings out a signet ring for you that matches the seal on the stamps. Uh, of... You know, You'll, of course, probably be challenged every now and then. I went, took the liberty of making you a family crest. Um, hands it to you. Uh, hands you a paper that's basically a deed to a castle that doesn't exist. Um, and uh, papers that mark your birth being from a legitimate human nation. That should uh, pass all but the strictest of scrutiny. Uh, not to brag too much, but my skills are quite good. Thank you. Thank you for your time and your uh, skills. Of course. Also, just so you know, I do offer an, an additional service. Uh, if you're looking to make a quick exit, not just from Skullport, but here, and she gestures kind of largely to indicate the dungeon. I happen to have a teleportation circle in the back that works. How much for a uh, one-time use? One-way trip, 50 gold pieces. Round trip, 100. I hand her 100 gold pieces and say, just so that we can keep that warm. Perfect. I'll keep you on the books. What? And she kind of looks at you. She, like, clearly, like, and what name should I put down for that to be able to, uh, to use? Snives. Snives it is. <clears throat> As a player, Dwayne is surprised that Shadow did not steal Densick's uh, letter of pedigree <laughs> to make a better copy. <laughs> See, here's the thing. I'm I'm absolutely certain that Densick would pull that out at every chance he gets to show off. If he weren't going to do that all the time to be saying how great he was, then yeah. But I can totally see Densick just randomly being like, ah, ha, ha, and look, you can see, I'm not only a perfect adventurer from the past that did amazing things, I have pedigree. <laughs> uh, she kind of bows you out. Thank you so much for your patronage. One of my better customers. And you notice that the inside of her door uh, does have the symbol of Xanathar on it. Likewise, it is always a pleasure to work with uh, someone of the esteemed guild. Come back any time, dear. And Hopefully, she closes the door. I, I make just a gesture. She's closing it. Hopefully I never have to. 
Agreed. <clears throat> and uh, you're able to, uh, I'm assuming you're going to take your uh, circlet back off as you make your way back to the group. Yes, again, as stealthily as possible so that Perfect. nobody can see that I am my counterpart. Yeah. Not a problem. Uh, you're able to make, and you're able to make your way back to the group, and you kind of like a brewery. I bet they're still there, and you got able to kind of make it there right as they're coming out, without even kind of making it seem like you were gone. You're just like, oh yeah, I was just chilling here. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was some good stuff they had inside. Totally. Yes, I right. am a fine investor. I was gonna say I pat, I patted. Uh, John's character on the back as I checked his coin purse and realized how much lighter it was and said oh you got taken why are you grabbing me by the sack shadow the same reason I always do I like to touch your sack indeed it is a fine sack it's usually a little bit more full oh yes I invested in that man's bar I think he's going to go places Yes. And yes. if worse comes to worse, I can always just work at the bar now. So, hey, there we go. Shadow, you're not supposed to touch someone's sack without asking. I, I look at Izzy, raise the eyebrow. When don't I touch sacks without them asking? Or without asking? I mean... And that's, that's where we'll take a break. We're about halfway <laughs> through. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll take a, uh, a quick f- uh, five minute break. We'll see y'all at the other side.
Hello, friends, adventurers, and people viewing this wonderful stream. We are back. Our adventurers have refreshed themselves, and we are ready to continue exploring the wonderful city of Skullport. Where we just left off was Shadow had rejoined the group after securing the uh, papers to back up his false identity as Snives. And uh, our players are once again back together as a full and complete party. Uh, you guys, I uh, believe, are decided to, to go to the library next. Uh, so from here, you kind of orient yourselves from uh, uh, Kal El had told you how to get there, and you're able to make it to the Athenaeum. As you approach this uh, building, you can see that there's some construction going on. To look, it looks like they're comp trying to combine this building with the buildings adjacent to it to expand. Um, and standing in front uh, of the double doors that lead into this building is a hooded uh, figure that uh, sees you all approaching, uh, and their robes are of uh, a deep blue with uh, three eyes and a triangle is the center of the robes. Hello. I assume you all come to seek knowledge. How can I help? Always seek knowledge, my friend. I'm interested in learning about the history between the above ground elves and the underground elves. Oh, a noble pursuit. Izzy, what about you? Izzy's kind of distracted because there's some weird tabaxi in the background and she's screaming about something being fascinating and is pulling a lot of books out of a bag of holding that are somehow like really full but not full i don't i don't yeah hi i want to learn sign language and i want to, oh oh was that offensive to say i'm sorry i just want to learn sign language and 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 want to know if there's books here stuff that i could learn about it pretty please of course we how we house many tomes on all kinds of different languages and their roots uh, I'd be happy to help you all find the information you seek. However, uh, this is an Athenaeum to the tribute of the all-knowing mistress. So as tribute for entry, I would need you all to share knowledge unique to you so that may be granted to the Athenaeum and its pursuit of, and its endless pursuit of knowledge. I can share my cookie recipe. Absolutely. And you just kind of quickly get it over and she writes it down. She's like, there are several baking tomes that we'll be able to add this to. Thank you. And she kind of just turns to the side and allows you to enter. Yay. <laughs> she looks, ex she looks expectantly at you, Nim. Well, I do know a good way to fry a bug, if that would work. The knowing mistress seeks all knowledge, so sure. And, so you uh, take a little bit of garlic. You, well, you, you, just, of you, just, you describe it to her, and she writes it down. Probably a slightly different uh, food tone than your friends, but you may enter. Ned? Well... I think a valuable piece of information for the Athenaeum would be that Elastrae wishes to unite the elves, all of the elves. This is known. Oh. Um. Nim's the Messiah. What? This is not known. No, have no, no, you no, no. have you had contact with the dancing goddess? Yes. Oh, you're welcome. And she kind of she pulls out she pulls out a spell book. She's, Do you mind if I cast a harmless spell on you? Oh, sure. As long, I mean, like if you were asked me if you wanted to pass a harmful spell on me, then I would definitely disagree. 
it is important to, to get consent before doing anything to your own person. I appreciate that. And she uh, casts a divination spell on you, it allows her to peer into your memories. And she looks specifically at the one of you when you made your transition from cleric to druid. She's like, oh. Yes, it seems you were destined to come here and use our Athenaeum. Please, enter. Do any of the rest of you want to enter, or you just kind of kind of wait for your friends to check out their books? I ask, I, I ask, do you have any copies of Jillian's Phantasmagora Sistica? Or perhaps Echo's Soothing Crystal Mathy? Well, yes, I think we have both, actually. Excellent. May I enter and peruse these tomes? You must share knowledge first. I lean in and whisper secrets about Shadow to her. She very excitedly writes it down. <laughs> <laughs> you may absolutely enter. I go in. I walk over and say, that man is a dirty, rotten liar. That is the secret. She just kind of bars your entry. I'm sorry. We were looking. We're looking for something a bit more tangible. All right. And I show him some tricks of how to cheat in cards that uh, Shadow made up himself. Okay. Proving everything I taught her right about you. <laughs> that I'm awesome. Yes. D Densick, you going in, or are you just content to hang outside? Densick is, he's a, uh, he's like apprehensive at first because he's trying to think. He's like, hmm, if I tell this story, they'll figure me out as a fraud. If I tell this story, they'll figure me out as a fraud. Mm. Shadow chimes in and says, how about you tell him about how you were a mute bard? That doesn't really give them insight into the world. And then he remembers, remembers his, his experience. He leans in and he says, because he's totally making it up. The world will come under great strife, for I have witnessed falling red star. Give me a persuasion check. That I can do. Not 20. Not 20. Not 20. Not 20. 17. 17. She kind of cocks her head at you. You should... There is... There is a store called Yandala's Closet. After you're done here, perhaps you should venture there and ask about your red star. Oh. I I will do such a thing. And you're all allowed entrance into the Athenaeum. Hey. You, you walk through and it is just rows and rows of books. The shelves, there's just so many shelves, they don't all match. A lot of them are converted from other pieces of furniture. There's tables that have kind of had makeshift shelves glued onto them that are standing vertically. There are what used to be look like maybe benches that have been turned into bookshelves. And it's just, it's, it's, it's almost claustrophobic to walk through here. And no matter how you turn or dip or dive or move through these shelves, you bump up against, you know, a shelf or a book or something like that. Um, but it, you, it kind of, we walk through all this and they're in the center. So it opens up just a little bit and there's a central desk that the person who uh, lets you all in goes and sits behind <clears throat> now uh, a book on sign language that should be quite easy the language section is down that way you want to go down the third row off you go uh, you you are looking to re reunite the elves uh, you'll want to start with a history 
of the separation of the pantheons. That will be in our religion section down that way. And then you'll probably want a brief history on the settling of the drow nations of the Underdark. That would be in our history section, row 20. And then you'll also want to probably look at the divisions of the above ground elves and why they separated. That would be in history, or that'd be in our culture section, about 30 rows down. And then you'll also want, and she just names like five more things you'd want to look at because this is no small feat you're attempting. And the last thing she says is, and then if I'm right, you'll want to go down the self-help aisle, uh, home improvement section, and you'll find many different things of how to renovate and refurbish buildings. Off you go. Uh, Shiraz, Shiraz, she just tells you like where there's like crossbow mechanic books for you to go busy yourself with. Uh, Shadow, I assume you just like walk down an aisle by yourself without being directed to. Uh, Cal, she's like... I've already uh, got three books in my arms and I'm like, oh, what? Sorry, I dropped one. No, no problem. Uh, you might be more interested in what we have in the restricted section. Go up, a, go up a level, and when you get to the locked gate, give him the passphrase, and she uh, messages you. Uh, the passphrase is Ayun's love, and uh, they'll allow you back there. I look at her for a second. I blink. I walk over to Shadow. I drop like thirty pounds of tomes on his bolt, uh, pile. He's already got in his arms. I'm going to the restricted section, and then I go. <laughs> I look at each and every single one of the books that he's handed to me and determine I find absolutely zero value in these <laughs> books. And You're about to say ones- that? You're about to say that, and then, like, the fifth book you look through, it's like the it, it's like the equivalent of the Tiefling Kama Sutra. <laughs> and you're like, Okay. All right. So, respect. So, respect. So, so then, it, then it goes like this: useless, useless, useless. Save for later. Useless, useless, <laughs> useless. <laughs> and then Shadow makes his way actually to the sections on like nobility and such, so that he can quickly get the rundown of the random crap that a noble should know. So you that, find the equivalent of uh, fine dining for dummies? Yes, so that I can know how to properly fake it when I have to. Perfect. Uh, and then Densik, uh, she, uh, once everyone's kind of gone, it's just you and her. She's kind of like, uh, bestiary section, look for the tome on dragons. That was actually what I was going to do but thank you and she just kind of looks at you like she gives you the like I know look Uh, you're all able to get the books you need you come back to the center and she's just like our policy is that you do not damage the books you treat the books as if they were your own and if you've never owned a book before that means you treat it as if it is the most important thing in your life Return the books in the same condition they were, or else you shall be banned from further use of the Athenaeum. As we understand each other. Indeed. Yes. Do I still have any of the books that uh, Cal was checking out? Uh, depends on Cal, if he wants to get them back from you or not. Oh no. By the time they find me again, I've developed a new Twitch, and this eye's the wrong color, and I'm like, <laughs> I've seen the truth of the cosmos. <laughs> yeah, like... You, you like you can see that he's like part of his uh there's like a, a new burn mark on his skin uh you can see that he like coughs up water at some point uh and then there's actually like if you get too close to him you can start hearing your own thoughts but like audibly and you look around but no it doesn't look like anyone else can hear them but like you can it's like your thoughts are being projected at you by a microphone it's weird it's a weird sensation So Shadow is initially going to think about doing something to one of the books that Cal has. When he walks up close enough and he starts to realize just how screwed up Cal looks. Also, I don't have any books. I come out with no books. Okay, well, pretending uh, for the moment that you had at least one start to. Hear my own thoughts, see how crazy you look. And then the audible thoughts in my head that I hear out loud say... 
Maybe it's worse to let him keep coming here. And I walk away. (laughs) All right. Uh, So yes, you're all able to leave with your uh, designated books. Um, And uh, you all put them in your packs, keep them nice and safe. She even gives you all several leather sleeves to wrap up the more uh, fragile of the books. I'm walking past Densic. I'm muttering to myself, I must find an illithid so I can commune with Ilsensi. What? <laughs> You're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, you guys all decide then to uh, make your way to the cent- more, more center area of the... Um, uh, of the of the town to kind of go to that house on the hill that you were told of. Um, as you're traveling that way, though, uh, Densick, if you'd like it this time, you can try to find that store. Yes, we will head towards the closet. Okay, so you're going to look for Yondala's closet. Um, as you kind of get to the center area of uh, of town, Densick, you spy it. It's 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 in the center area of the town but it's down like a side alley that seems kind of dark and there's not a lot of traffic back that back that way um but you like you like you kind of are drawn to it you walk down there and you do see uh, a sign that says Yandala's closet um as the rest of you and so we'll get to you in a second as the rest of you're traveling you can see the it's not so much a hill as it is more of a just an elevated kind of land that's been propped up by uh, several you know, you know abandoned and uh, deconstructed houses uh, but you can see a look at the house from here uh, looks like a vertical spider the pieces of the house take the shape of the head the abdomen and the thorax and uh, the um, the way that kind of the tree branches next to her shaped almost look like legs. And you're just like, oh, okay, yep, can see why the locals think this place is spooky. Um, but you all trudge forward uh, nonetheless. Cal, uh, telepathically, uh, you receive a message to uh, come down like an alleyway. Uh, it's just like an offshoot of where the rest of the characters are walking. I just go. Okay. But as I disappear, well, that's also the moment. Nim accidentally tidal waves. Shadow. <laughs> okay. Uh, are, do you want the damage as well, or? No, no, just okay. high level illusion convinced he's actually soaked. Okay. Uh, I, Shadow, give me a perception check to see if you can hear this thing coming. All right. <laughs> bad. I hope he fails. Twenty-five. Five. All right. You may make a deck saving throw at disadvantage, and this the evasion would not apply to this. Disadvantage fourteen. Fourteen. Splash. That does not. That does not beat the spell save. But you are able to kind of like do that thing where you just like see it coming, and you're just like. And it's an Walks exact over. replica of what you've seen Nim cast like five times, and I'm not even there. I it couldn't still be me. Don't, I still don't believe that it's Nim. Yeah, because, uh, you can't. You're not sure. You, it could you, be some you, random so you, townsperson. Yeah. So you, oh no you no don't, no. I, I don't, don't know for a fact Cal did it. Yeah, but like more than fifty percent of your Cal. brain is like yeah. Nim it, wouldn't do that. It, Nim, it, Nim it, wouldn't. The, do that. the entire thing in my head is. Cal sees it, Cal, or I mean, Shadow sees it. Shadow knows that that was the thing that uh, Nim has done multiple times and hasn't seen Cal do that. Cal or still somehow knows it's Cal that's at fault. Even if Nim cast the spell, it's still <laughs> Cal's fault. <laughs> somehow, somehow, I know. Him or you might not him. have pulled the trigger, but you put the gun in their hand. Yes, somehow. <laughs> This is Cal's fault. <laughs> and as it hits, I just... Fuck. 
<laughs> and then yeah, immediately, so you are now nice immediate, and immediately run to Izzy. Izzy, 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 Izzy. Okay, 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 stop, 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 oh my god, Izzy, 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 so like while she's crying, she starts like she does resuscitation but she's like crying like because like her anxiety of him constantly saying is he is he is he just kind of like overwhelmed her no so she's like oh, here's where i wanted to get awesome patty i used okay. an illusion suppress the digitation has no effect <laughs> he's not actually wet <laughs> That's true. so so as this is going on and i'm still wet wet I will just get even worse. Is he? 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 Oh no! She runs and like hides behind a Ciroc and is like, "Protect me! He won't stop." Here I dry, I dry you off, and I think I'm gonna give him a big bear hug. I could use a little moisture here, which has no effect, and you don't get wet. What? I, but I'm I'm so dry. It's always so dry in here. Why is it? Why are you not wet? Yeah. So Sharask and Nim, uh, you hey, now hey, have I, to get I your have... party back together uh, as they're causing a commotion. And Cal is nowhere to be seen. Just disappeared. Yeah. Cal and Densic are no longer with you. Uh, oh, Densic, you uh, walk into Yondala's closet and. If you could picture like what a hoarder's house looks like, it's kind of like that. Mm. There's just like random crap everywhere. And there's like, there are shelves, but everything is kind of like loosely on there. And a lot of it's like, like some of the shelves are like busted. And so things have kind of poured down a little bit. Um, there's no clear like aisles. Everything kind of just like winds about weirdly. I have to like uh, kind of shove the door open because there's stuff in front of yeah, the door as well. Yeah, it's definitely <laughs> one of those. Squeeze my fat ass in. It's kind of like, <laughs> uh, and there is a like on, on the door for it when it opens. It's not like the usual kind of like ding ding, ding bell. It's like a gong. Boom! And you look around like the hell. Is, you don't see anything, um, but you do hear kind of like. Uh, someone moving from the opposite side of the store towards you, and it sounds like they're having a very. It sounds like they have a very hard time of getting to you. Like you hear more stuff sliding down and hitting the floor. You hear like ah oh, shit, and like you know they're tripping over stuff to kind of get to you. And finally, uh, a, a tabaxi is standing in front of you, and he just kind of just like p- pats himself off, and he like pulls like a sewing needle out of his arm, and like throws it on the ground. He's like, ah oh, yes. How can this one help you today? Oh, well, I've come to seek knowledge of a vision. Ah, a vision. Yes, I've heard of those. This one has heard of those. When I was younger, I had a vision. An oh, eye. This, this one thinks this is going to be a story. Kixo! Kexo, you're never around when I need you. Get over here. Continue. Uh, my servant will be here shortly. Yes, I had a vision of an eye chasing me. And then the very next day, as I looked out to the sky... One of the larger piles on the ground next to you starts to rustle a little bit, and like a kobold like, digs its way out of there, and just like... <gasps> yes? This, this is a very... so this one requires that you get us tea and cookies as that one is going to tell us a story. Okay. And he like dives back into the pile, like like digs into it. And you can see like almost like a Bugs Bunny kind of burrow, like start moving its way through the junk into the bed. I'm, this one apologizes, please. You saw an eye that followed you, okay? Yes, it, it chased me through what I believed was dreams but it could have been a vision. And then the very next day I saw a red star, maybe a meteor come across the sky. Mm. For the smallest of seconds, the entire, this was daytime, the entire sky had darkened. Mm. I know it is some type of omen. And 
uh, this one wonders if anyone else saw the, the thing you speak of. Not that I know of. I was alone that day. Mm, okay. This one wonders if maybe uh, you had a bit too much to drink or were out in the sun too long or perhaps you dabble in the magical fun guy. The magical what? The magical fun guy. Ah. The, the stuff that makes you see uh, unicorns when I'm not actually there and... Uh, Giant no, uh, plants that talk and ask you to give them back rubs. No, and then he like he switches. He goes, "No, this one does not." Ah. Uh, <clears throat> well, and he starts to go back to where he came from. Is like put like using his foot to sweep debris out of the way as you go down these halls. Uh, I have heard this one has heard of stories of falling red rocks before, but this one must admit I do not own such a thing here. Uh, Is there a reason you came to this one with this story? I had mentioned it to one of the individuals at the library, and they said that I should seek you out. Ah... A representative of the Knowing Mistress sent you. Interesting. Let me do, let me check this one's records. Uh, I will be with you momentarily. Kixo! 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 And like, like coming around a corner, like running and like holding a tray and coming to a stop. The cups kind of move with them, and the a little of the tea spills out of each cup. <laughs> yes, serve that one tea, please. And he just holds the tray up to you, and there's like it's a chipped tea glass. Um, and you kind of have to like hold it like th- like this, like <laughs> with the handle out from you, to not cut your lip when you try to sip from it. Mm. Um, and there are, there is, but there is also on the tray, uh, sugar and cream, if you'd like to. And the, the smallest of tea cakes? <laughs> no, no cakes, just tea. Oh. He notices you, that he notices that, like, you go to reach for something, and you're just like, oh. Kixo, where are the cakes? Um, we're out, boss. <sighs> this one's apology. It's, it's, it's quite, all, quite all right. I guess I expected too much. He looks what very sunken from that. <laughs> what a dick! Well, uh, this one will go check this, his, their records, as uh, this one said. Please uh, peruse. Kick so! Help that one. And he walks away. Tail kind of like hitting the floor seems down now yeah so what what kind of i mean i I know this is like a hoarder's house but what what is the majority of stuff that's in here is it just like books or is there like you start looking around like sticking out weird spots honestly a little bit of everything like you like you kind of so you start like actually focusing on the the piles and you see like uh you see like a mannequin hand that has a ring on each finger um, you see uh, several weapons kind of like stabbed into shelves or like pillows. Uh, you see like little contain, like ceramic containers and you take the lid off and there's dust in them. Uh, you see uh, many other tr- like you see like ch- like works workers clothes. You see bracelets. Uh, you find like a puzzle cube, like you find all kinds of things in here. And as like you, every now and then when you pick something up and you're about to put it back where you found it, Kixo just like comes, he just like grabs it out of your hand. He's like, mine. And he like scuttles away and he comes back empty handed. And he kind of so, just follows, he's just following you through around here. So I'm, I'm pushing stuff around and uh, I do see it's underneath a lot of things, so you would imagine that it would be dusty and dirty, but the book itself is rather clean. And I open this book, and like the first five, six pages, they're all empty. 
on the sixth page, I see a, a drawing. It's it's hand drawn. And you see two individuals. But you don't see their faces. It's like someone drew them from the back. One of them is a human. And the other one you can't quite tell. One of them feminine, the other one masculine. And up at the top are just two letters, K and R. And it's like, it triggers something in his head. He's like, I, I know this. I've heard this story. That was just flavor. <laughs> that, that's fine. Uh, the kobold kind of looks at you holding the book. He's just like, Fine, you can have that one. And he uh, walks away and he comes back um, with uh, one of the mannequin hands that has rings on it. He's like, Kixel will give you gift. You know tell owner. I know tell anyone. Good. And he holds up the uh, mannequin hand. He's like, pick a finger. Is this a regular hand? Yes. It's a, it's a mannequin human hand, so it's five fingers, yeah. Hey, just making sure. Oh, is that not going to do it? Oh, uh, the first, so the thumb. Perfect. And he snaps the thumb off and hands you the full like mannequin thumb with ring. Ring of winter. Use wisely. And he scuttles off with the mannequin hand. Uh, all right. Ring of winter. Do I feel this ring pulsating in my hand? It definitely seems magical. I will, uh, Place it on my left hand. Sorry. Right. Uh, do you want to look for anything else specific here? Or are you going to make your way back to uh, where the tabaxi was going? Yeah, I'll, I'll wait for the tabaxi to come back. I, I guess I'll just keep perusing around and knocking stuff over. Okay. Maybe I find a you know a squeaky toy that reminded me of something I had as a child. Uh, you kind of. Uh, knock over something and then you're about to you know it, you see like a little bit of glass reflection you pick it up and it's a small uh, pocket mirror that as you're holding it up and looking in it like your breath's not affecting it, it just seems to fog over on its own as you look into it what do I see if I wipe uh -huh. it like if I wipe it away you wipe it away it's just a normal reflection and it just keeps trying it just keeps fogging up on its own You, what is this? <laughs> it's a mirror. Simple like, enough. Get down next to him and see if I can see both of us in the mirror. <laughs> you do, and it starts to fog up, and, he, and he's like watching the mirror fog up with you, and he's like, not very good mirror, but mirror. How much would you want for such a trinket? Oh, kick so no price. Uh, not quite at that level. Uh, Moonstruck does the pricing. All right, I will. I will wait for him to return then. Uh, you want to go to him? He at counter. Oh, is it okay? All right, I'll. Come, come, and he like grabs your hand. Body and, like, starts surf. leaning. He starts, oh, start, he, starts, of stuff. <laughs> he starts like leading you like a child leads an adult. He's like, come, come. And uh, you get back there and it does start to thin out a little bit. And the counter, while there's a bunch of stuff all over the counter, there is a nice like little square section cut away for uh, someone to work at. And uh, 
the tabaxi looks up from some books he's looking at. And you can tell that these are like uh, sales records. Mm. He looks up and he's like, ah, and did you find anything of interest? Uh, yes, this. I show him the mirror. I will take it. Five gold pieces. Salt. I drop the money on the counter. Uh, this one was able to find what uh, this one was looking for. I sold a or this one sold a uh, red stone a couple months ago. It was described as this one would describe it as giving off the heat of a volcano and as bright as a star. I sold it to the Yarmor. Rod Krieger? I have met her. Ah, yes. If if you were interested, this one suggests you go and talk to her. I'll throw another five gold on the table. I'll say for your time. Uh, this one insists that uh, gold is given for a product. And he reaches underneath the, the counter and puts and just it's a it's a fist sized rock. Doesn't have any other discerning features, it's just a like it looks like normal just rock. A rock. <laughs> but when you pick it up, you can hear and it feels like in your hand it's beating like a heart. Ooh. I will uh, place it in my little satchel. This one wishes you a good day. And he bows. I so. Wish the man bow. a good day. Yeah, I try to bow and my ass knocks over like a pile of stuff. You hear something <laughs> shatter. I, I do not, do not worry. Do not just worry. Turn around that. and walk out. It is very possible you might have increased its value. All right. And uh, you and you walk out. So yeah, I get uh, out. I get out into the alley. I'm holding gonna, this rock. Yeah. Looking at it. Mm-hmm. I'm kind of shaking it, holding mm-hmm. it up to my ear. Still like feeling the thump. Mm-hmm. I'll be like, maybe Cal knows more about this. Maybe. Put it back into my pocket. And then as I go to turn to go back to the party. Okay, I notice two people coming the same way that I came. Uh, but something's not right. Like, like it's like the, these people aren't right. Like, I need to get out of the way kind of feeling. And uh, they're both hooded. But one of them looks like they're on fire, but it's not fire. More like they're smoking. So I kind of like duck in an alley. I watch them go and they enter the same building, the closet that I just came out of. And then I continue back to to my friends. Once I do catch up, are you going to your friends or are you going to uh, Rod Krieger's? I'm going to go back to the, my friends first. Okay. All right. But yeah, I'll go catch up with them, see what Cal has to say about this beating rock. But as I'm coming up to them, all you can hear Densik saying is, oh, this, this, this is impossible. The, 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 the wraith was not supposed to exist. Uh, Densic, as you walk up, you notice that your group is, you, you catch up to them right as they're getting up to the old spooky, supposedly haunted drow house. Uh, but Cal's not with them. Cal, you were pulled into, you were summoned to the alley. And yes. there is a hunched over cloaked figure that continues to talk to you telepathically. Cal, we have been watching you. I strike a pose. You should. 
we think you are the correct individual to approach about this. Your unique connections make you a desirable. Would you be interested in, in getting the most powerful secrets that your mistress could ever want? Depends. Who are we? He pulls back the hood and it's a mind flare. Continues talking and, and telepathically too. I... The new twitch twitches. Go ahead and start your sentence. I am the ambassador yep, of Yep, let's Stormheart. go. I didn't... <coughs> okay. And he uh, pulls out a tuning fork, says some words, and a portal opens. And looking through it, you can see the plane of fire, the elemental plane of fire, and the city of Dis beyond it. Or... No, the bra- I'm sorry, the city of Brass uh, through it. And he's like, I have a, a bit of a test for you first before you can make your, your position permanent. Come. And he steps through the... Uh, before hole. he steps through, one requirement. The brain stays in this head without any weird green goop. The tentacles kind of like ebb and flow, and you can tell that this is a mind flare laugh. And just like kind of this weird, like, <laughs> kind of comes out of it. Yes, of course. Your brain in your head. That's where it will do us the most good for now. Again, the weird kind of chuckle. And as Cal steps through the portal, the last thing you would hear if you were there was, so tell me how I can become like you. And then it closes. And as soon as it closes, shadow is suddenly dry. So, as that is going on, Shadow has still been... Izzy! 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 Thank you, Izzy. You're welcome. The Shrask is currently trying to hug him like, why can't I get squeeze any water out of this cat? Has anyone seen Cal? You say that just as, De- just as Densic is walking back up to all of you. A scroll floats to the ground in front of Nim. Cal's handwriting in a wax seal. Please deliver to Sprouting Hop should you ever see him again. Shadow immediately picks it up, even though it's in front of Nim. You unhand that, and Nim. I I, I take a, I take a moment to look at the fact that it's got his seal. I hand it to Izzy. Open okay. that for me. No. It has Nim's name on it, though. As you're handing it to Izzy, Nim, you're able to snatch it out of Shadow's hand. <laughs> I'm going to hold on to this. Puts it away safely. Where Shadow would not dare touch. Oh my. That, that, that doesn't <laughs> exist. <clears throat> that is correct. Yeah, it does. I made it out of waterproof vellum. It goes in uh, Nim's water flask. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Boom. Well, then, then I would just steal the water flask. Uh, because it's, so you guys, in, you. it's encased water. It's not actually water. So you continue walking up the hill to the spooky house, the spooky woo house. And uh, you, you all stop about five yards short of the of the door. And there is kind of this like chilled kind of foreboding feeling that's kind of crept into the back of all your minds. This place needs a good cleansing. This place looks like a money pit. This looks like something from my nightmares. It's full of so much promise. And you now it's currently home. Yeah, you know, the different are... takes from all of you. <laughs> Why are we here again? <laughs> to change the world. Hopefully for the better. To dry off. You are dry. To not die while mining. My pants. Oh. Uh, Nim, 
Do you go to open the door? Nim will actually knock first. Okay. Even uh, though... Reach... Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Even though... Even though there's probably no one there, Nim would like to be respectful of the possible spirits within. Okay. Uh, you raise your uh, hand to knock, and as soon as your knuckles come into contact with the door, it's this weird kind of strobe flashing kind of uh, feeling of uh, a, a woman screaming combined with like visions into like creepy crawlies in the dark and it just kind of overwhelms your senses for a second and it feels almost like a couple minutes go by but then you raise your hand again from the knock and you kind of look at everyone to see if they experienced that too or if you know you've been there if you've just kind of been stationary for a while like what's going on and they just look at you they're just like what are you having seems- second thoughts are you ready to go in I saw a vision when I went to knock. When I knocked, when I was done knocking, something. I'm actually, before we go in, going to say a prayer to Shellis and Elistrae. And actually, to loath, but not, not in worship to, but, but an apology for how she was treated. Before as, fall, you know? As you invoke Loth's name, kind of the same vision racks you again. And you just, no words are spoken or or even telepathically. You just kind of get this impression, this kind of alien pushing in your brain of impressing upon the idea of why. It's just kind of repeated over and over again, like, why, why, why? I don't have an answer to why, but I hope to make it right. The emotion changes from questioning and demanding to curiosity. And the alien kind of presence leaves your brain and you're able to, like as you're turning the knob, the locks that were holding it in place or unlocking literally as you're turning the door and you open it. It's just kind of one of those things where as soon as the door is open, the candles on each side of the hallway all start lighting up and they, and on this ground floor it opens up into a large giant kind of meeting hall area that the far end uh, has a stage. This looks very much like a gathering hall of some sort. You look and you kind of all enter, look around. There aren't any, there is not any iconography to any particular deity or being. Um, You kind of explore the rest of the house. There's rooms and uh, a study and, you know, several other staples, but there's no, and and, in none of the rooms do you find any iconography to anything. And if it wasn't for the fact that the house is vaguely shaped like a spider, you realize that there's... <laughs> you realize that the... It may have seemed that the town is kind of just associating maybe bad memories and history to this house. And uh, you get the sense that it might take a little while, but you might be able to rewrite the history of this house and forge new relationships here. As you're leaving, you notice on the wall next to the door, there's a key. Take it off the peg. Close the door. 
after everyone gets out and, you're, and it locks the front door. Kind of put it in your uh, pocket, pat it. Feeling pretty good. I feel like there might be a purpose here. Before officially leaving the property, Nim mm-hmm. will just put their hand on the door and say, thank you. Uh, as you do that, uh, Elvish is kind of scrolled along the door frame and it meets at the top. And uh, you didn't, you kind of, are, you kind of innately gain the knowledge that the symbols that are shown are the symbols of the, uh, original Sahadrin, the the symbols that were lost to time of all of the drow gods and goddesses before they were split into the dark and light. It is a, there, it's symbology that has been lost to time, but it is symbology that has made itself known to you. You all kind of... Uh, or start making your way back to uh, the flagon and the dragon. Uh, Densic, do you want to steer your group back over to the armory again? Uh, yeah, I'll, do, I'll I'll merely mention that I need to see. Uh, <clears throat> I need to go back and talk to uh, Rod Krieger. Okay. For a moment. Easy. You guys have kind of figured out this area of the land, and the armory was in a spot that was very much secluded, so you're able to get back over there. And uh, you can see that she's sitting in a she's sitting in a chair, uh, drinking out of a very large mug. Seems she is uh, done smithing for the day. She sees your group coming back, and she's. <sighs> Giant woman, I love you. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll approach her. <clears throat> I'll say Rod Krieger. Uh, a moment of your time, if you please. You've already taken a bit of it, haven't you? A little more, if, if that's all right. She just nods her head. I spoke with one called Moonbeam at her Yolanda's. Her, uh, Yandala's. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> her eyes narrow very, very thinly. Go on. And they said that you purchased a stone, a red stone. And what interest is it of you? I believe I saw this same stone fall from the sky. And I was just wondering. Good for you. You can't have it. I don't want it. I want to know the significance of it. What powers does it hold? I don't know yet. May I see it? No. And then she kind of, she looks at you. (sighs) She reaches into her pocket and she pulls out a deck of cards. Oh, here we go. (laughs) I'll play you for it. Oh. Oh. What game did you have in mind? First, the stakes. You win. You get the stone. And if you win? I win. Your friend works for six years. Good. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I love it. I'm going to shoot him. (laughs) Wow. All right, so uh, the way this card game is going to work is we're going to use dice for it. Um, I see this as a win-win situation. So I'll, I'll tell you how the game works, uh, like the full rules, and then we'll play a couple hands and we'll see how it goes. So the mechanics dice-wise are first you roll a d8, uh, and then you put that to the side, and then people make a bet. And then you roll a d6, put that to the side, another round of betting, and then you roll a d4. Put that to the side. Another round of betting. At the end, both players show their cards, aka 
whoever has the higher number wins. Um, just okay. like any, just like any good card game, you can make attempts to cheat. You can make attempts to bluff. Um, however you want to approach this up to you. Uh, but that is the mechanics of how this will work dice wise. Okay. Are we ro- what are, I, I'm taking it. We're rolling physical dice here. Yes. We can, mm. Yes. Roll. Yes. Roll physical dice. Cause okay. I don't want to, I don't want to see your rolls either. Right. Right. Uh, right. I, and, <laughs> and, uh, this is one of the few things as a DM I'll let you know ahead of time. I do not fudge. I will not fudge this. As I'm this not is gonna truly going to be a, a game of chance. Okay. So we're, we're rolling a D8. Now, now what? Yes. So, so it's, roll, it's whoever has the highest at the end, right? Yes. The total of the D8, D6, and D4, whoever has the highest total at the end wins. Okay. All Here right, goes so the D8. First deal. She uh, looks at her cards. And you kind of, she kind of just uses like chits, like because you're not because it's not the gold pieces you're worried about. It's the years of service versus the red rock. So she just she she bets on her first roll. I will match basically the, and, match the bet, yeah, I guess. Yeah, and the way I'll, the betting I'll will call. work is either yeah, is if you can either call, raise, or, or if you're first in turn, you can bet or fold, and you can always fold at any time as well. I will. I will. I'll call. Okay. Uh, so put your d8 to the side and roll a d6. Uh, the, and then the the and each round, who bets first flips. So it's your turn to bet first. So if you want to bet, fold. Yeah, you can better fold, basically. I will bet another chit. She'll look at her hand and she'll, she'll fold and she'll be like, first round's yours. Basically, like, the, and mechanically, the round I was gonna have. <laughs> mechanically, wise, we'll kind of do like a we'll do like a best of three kind of thing. Okay. All right. So she deals again. Uh, so roll a d8. Uh, she she will bet. I will call. Okay. Put it to the side. And roll a d6. Okay. You're, you're, so you would you would bet first, quote unquote. Oh, uh, I will bet one additional chit. She'll raise you. How many? We'll, we'll just say like one each time, just because oh. we're dealing with like imaginary yeah, yes, numbers yes, yes, here. Yes, yes, okay, okay. So she'll just kind of, she'll just raise you. Uh, call. Okay. Uh, roll a d4. Uh, she will bet. I will fold because I don't want to keep adding years. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And she's like, this this one, this one determines. So uh, one last hand. That was not a. I did not roll very well. <laughs> remember, remember, you can attempt to cheat yeah, or bluff. Yeah. Uh, all right, roll your d8. I actually thought that whole time Dwayne was faking bad roll face. Nope, he's got a terrible poker face. <laughs> uh, does, and yeah, it doesn't matter your actual poker face. Like if Densick wants to bluff, then there there would be a skill roll for that. Right. Or if he wants to cheat, there would be a skill roll for that. Okay. Uh. She will bet. I will call. Okay. Roll d6. I will bet. A raise. I will call. Okay. Roll d4. She will bet. I will bet. She'll raise you back. I will call. Okay. She had nine. I had ten. <laughs> <laughs> As the cart, you everyone reveals the cart to each other in slow motion, and she kind of has this grin on her face. And then you just flip over your last card and you pull out the, the equivalent of you know the the inside straight, and she's just like, "A deal's a deal," and she trudges into the house behind her. And she comes out with the red rock. Uh, she It's like in this perfectly uh, made uh, steel chest. 
And she just hands it to you, like kind of doesn't even meet your eyes. And she's like, no, go. She grumbles. I will, uh, I'll take the chest and I'll, I'll go to turn away. And, uh, I'll take this thumpy rock out of my pocket and I'll turn to her and say, just so that there's no ill will. And I'll just hand it to her. She looks at the rock. She can feel it thumping in her hand. Eh. She goes back. She goes back to sitting down. One hand has the rock. One hand is she goes back to drinking her ale. Well done, right. Dinsick. I didn't want to have to kill you today. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. You uh, still got three years. <laughs> uh, and a suit of armor. And a crossbow, hopefully. We'll see about the crossbow. I planned working very hard for that. Now, uh, unless anybody wants to try to find anything else or explore the city anymore, you guys want to head back to the flag and the dragon? Where's Cal? It is a Still good question. Nice green cover is a hint. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I... Oh, oh, I gotta look at it now. Oh my! Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. I cannot see. It is a mind flare. A giant mind flare. It is perfect. I am terrified. I oh, mean, has, no. has anyone seen him? Did he just did he did he go shopping? He, he vanished left around us. the time. He vanished around the time uh, you did uh, your little building trip. I assume he'll meet up with us later. He is a big boy, is he not? I mean, I he, don't he, think he's coming back, though. I, I don't leave know. A scroll. He, he, hmm. let, let's put it this way. If he comes back, he has to face the music with me. Well, let's go There's get something music? to eat. Are I'm you hungry. guys going to be dancing? Oh, that'd be so cute. Yes, he will have to deal with you dancing as well. <gasps> Yay, dancing! It's a party. Is it my birthday? Are we doing a birthday surprise party? No. Oh. I don't want to, whatever that he wouldn't does, be a surprise. Uh, I hope he doesn't bring back bullets. Those things are disgusting. Oh my god. Uh, so are you guys gonna head to the restaurant, the bar, or uh, Izzy? There's also still the bakery if you want to go to the bakery. <gasps> yes, that's right. I need to get cookies. Cookies, please. I would love to go with you. Actually, I okay. I feel like picking up a baked good maybe for um. Your girlfriend. Uh, okay, we'll say we'll say everyone heads to the bakery, enticed by the idea of sweets to uh, pad the empty stomachs you were day drinking on. Uh, so everyone heads to uh, Sweet Like Ants, uh, and it is built and looks like a classic uh, boulangerie in the middle of a Paris street. Uh, there, it's giant glass windows with all kinds of baked treats uh, easily seen from those glass windows. And the door is purposely kept open so that the smells of fresh baked goods can waft out into the streets and cause those to come in that have a slight rumble in the tumble. Uh, you all, and it's, a, it's a bit of a smaller place. You all walk in, it's a bit crammed. Uh, and you kind of uh, are just, there's, it just, there's pastries everywhere. There's uh, croissants, there's br- all kinds of different breads. Um, there are elephant ears, there's cookies, there's cupcakes, there's cakes, there's just literally any baked good one could imagine. There's some foreign stuff that looks elven made. There's some really foreign stuff that looks like it might not even be from this plane of existence, um, but it's still technically a baked good. Um, it's just kind of a a baker's delight in here. I'm gonna try that one. Oh, and uh, coming coming from okay. behind the, the the doors behind the counter, uh, comes out this very large, giant esque looking person, uh, gray skin, very large ears, a big bulbous kind of pinkish nose, uh, with tuft of curly hair. Um, well, how are you all, fine folks? My name is Napiner. 
And this is my bakery. Is there anything in particular you were looking for? You have uh, something savory. He just gestures to the entire... I'm not sure if that was supposed to be a joke, but yes. Like a, a, a meat pie or something like that. <gasps> Look, it's a maple bacon donut. Okay, I'm going to... Yes, remember. that... It's not well known, but that's actually my invention. I invented the maple you bacon donut. Invented the maple. Oh one of you. God, I love you. One it's of you so needs funny. to ask this gentleman what the name of his fine establishment is, or maybe what his name is. What? Well, my name is not Peter. What's his mother's name? I don't know you well enough. That sounds like a security word for me. You might I be bet. trying to break into my passwords. I bet it's Marge. <gasps> <laughs> or is that his daughter's name? No, it, Marge. Mid his middle name, his wife's name, who knows? Yes, what does it's his this, middle name. What does this fellow look like? No, Peter Marge. <laughs> He, so like I said, he's very, very large, very large. Uh, tall, uh, curly hair on top of his head, big kind of floppy ears, uh, bulbous pink nose, uh, gray skinned that almost kind of has a slight fur to it. Um, he is a fear bulb. I need a dozen of these uh, meat pies over here and a couple of the exotic ones, please. <gasps> well, it's, slow down there. You're that... not... It's not kind of for sure how you might react to those exotic ones. I'm looking for a catnip donut. Well, of course, we've definitely got that right over here. I and buy a dozen. Absolutely. And he just hands you the box. Uh, the The box has a very nice, elegant script. The, uh, it's, it, the box itself is pink, and the script on it is black. Uh, and it just says sweet like ants and the S is uh, made like it uh, on the script the S is ants <laughs> nice it's definitely a fur bulk it's a small thing. How much? attention to detail oh uh, that'll just be a couple of gold pieces I give him 10 whoa big spender is I he's plan kind on of coming like, back. Oh, nice. <laughs> Come back at them donuts. Is he's kind of freaking out because like, there's a cookie that she's never seen before in her entire life, and she's like freaking out because she thought the cookie only existed in her dreams. It is like a giant cookie that's like this thick, with giant like chocolate chunks. Um words butterscotch chunks white chocolate and fresh raspberries i'll mix it and it's just a giant cookie the size of like an orc's hand like it's huge and she's freaking out because she she thought she dreamed it up and it's here in reality and oh so she's like i see we have someone it. with a discerning eye looking at the crimson chew is that uh, cake or cookie? It's hard to tell. It's both. It's amazing and it's wonderful and it's just everything I've ever dreamed of. His eyebrows raise a little bit. As you say both, he's like, ah, oh, someone who knows their baked goods. I like it. I have to ask, are you, are you looking for, like, someone to work here with you? I just, I love baking cookies so much. Please, well, you have to hire me. I'll do anything. Please. Uh, well, I didn't necessarily need help in the bakery, but I suppose I could teach you. Wouldn't hurt to have an apprentice. Although you will also have to take on some extra duties, which would include uh, going and getting ingredients. And, uh, oh, of course... I would need you to make sure you look after my pet. Uh, her name is 
Uh, hold on. Her name oh, is Dest. Her name is Destiny. I do you have any? Ex- after your do destiny. you have? Do you have any experience in exotic pets? No, not technically. Oh. Well, how about experience in unicorns? Destiny is a <gasps> unicorn. What? <laughs> what? 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 Yes. I'm sorry. Did, uh, if that's a deal breaker, I understand. No, 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 no. no. You, you don't. You don't. You don't understand. And like she like pulls her backpack off and like pulls out like a giant like stuffed animal that's a unicorn. And then she takes out a notebook that has like unicorns drawn all like all over it. Then she has a pen that's like supposed to mimic like a quill that's supposed to mimic the shape of a unicorn horn. And then she just pulls out like a whole bunch of unicorn themed stuff out of her backpack. Oh, well, I it seems like you're a unicorn. what they call a super fan. Okay, sure. I'll hire you. Yes. And she just kind of like starts dancing and and, and then place. He, he he takes a slice out of the uh, cookie cake uh, that you were eyeing. Here you go for my <laughs> new apprentice. I love you. Uh, I am happily married. I am sorry. It's okay. I'm happily gay. Okay. I in Destiny. It's well, a unicorn named Destiny. First thing in the morning, then. <laughs> and she just kind of like takes the piece that was offered to her and just like deeply inhales the scent of it before like shoving it all in her mouth. Damn it. I am sad. I meant to name the unicorn Mystery. Well, too late. <laughs> and then I was going to teach you that how you call Mystery is by going, we snaw. <laughs> Next time. Next so, time. Next time. So, so uh, I need a dozen of those, a couple of those, if you will. Uh, sir, as much as I'd like to serve you, those. Uh, I just don't think your constitution can handle that. Mm. Okay, what about those apple pies then and a little bit of those meat pies? Are those acceptable? Oh, th- those aren't apple pies. Um, yeah, no, that's um. well, you know, I'll let you find, you, you can find out on your own. I think you'll be able to withstand those. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I'll have a dozen, please. Oh, uh, and he just boxes up one. Uh, start with one, and if you like it, you can come back tomorrow with your very excitable friend and my new apprentice over here. Uh, oh, okay. She, she, yeah, it does seem very excited. Holy crap. Oh, and, like, her. she just, like, grabs Sarask, like, her arm, like, his arm. And she squeezes down. too hard almost like you, you yes. it's gonna bruise for <laughs> sure. <laughs> and she's, she's shaking him. Why? I oh, don't don't shake the baby. Don't, why? Don't shake what? the baby. Don't shake the baby. <laughs> okay, the baby. stop. Oh, I'm so glad I was not close. Calm yet. down. All right. Uh you're finally able to extract Izzy from the bakery. She lingers for another ten minutes or so. It's kind of like Hi. Dur- during that lingering time, I walk up to him. And, since we're in such a public place and all, this is the perfect time to show you. Look at what I found at the library. And I hand them the Tiefling Kama Sutra. <laughs> you look at the oh. cover, you're just like, I don't get it. And then you open it, you're like, oh. I, I, <laughs> I, I saw the way that the bartender and you were looking at each other. So, uh,. Don't I, um, don't don't destroy the book, please. You're, you're like you're need, like you're I kind of embarrassed, to, need, and you close need, it real quick, and then you open to it back that up to the library. But then you open it back up again, and you kind of flip through, and you're like, "Huh, page thirty-seven. That looks familiar." Oh, and then there's page sixty-nine. Yeah. Um. Thank you. Um. 
Um, excuse me, Mr. Just, uh, Mr. Baker, do you have anything with rose petals? Have some mm. fun. Oh, incorporating flowers is my specialty. <laughs> and he goes and he finds a cake. It's kind of like, it's just a very simple cake, but uh, it's got, he says it's got like rose blossom water in the flavoring. And then uh, you see that the, what you thought was very simple, the icing on it is that like it's, he ice, it's icing and it's pure icing. It's not anything else. Rose petals on the actual cake itself that you thought was actual rose petals is actually ice rose petals. Here you go. Oh Make sure goodness. you give that one to someone real special. Oh, oh yes, definitely. Okay, well, you all have a good day today, and um, uh, little one, I, I, I didn't. Uh, what's your name? I am Izzy. And yeah, I am um, Izzy, so I'll, happy I'll to work with you. Yeah, no, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, you all have a very nice day then. Uh, thank you. Can't believe it. As you're about to leave, he kind of like, oh, uh, Mr. Lizard, um, if uh, you find that that pie doesn't quite agree with you, um, what you're going to want to do is uh, drink a full glass of salt water and then um, kind of mix that with a little bit of uh, sawdust, and then that should do the trick. Ah, yes. Uh, uh, the, the, the pipe cleaner solution. Absolutely. No, no, no! You don't drink that. You just, you just boil it and then smell it. But you don't drink that solution. Why would, why would you drink salt water and sawdust? If you drink it, you'll throw up. Cleans, cleans your belly out. No, that's okay. You clearly don't know what you've gotten yourself into. So I wish you the best of luck. Uh, with that, uh, you guys can all make your way back to. Uh, the flagon and the dragon. I uh, sit down. Cal L greets all of you. Oh, looks like you all had a very busy day, and you're minus one. Mm, yes, good riddance. Ooh, hey. what? Bits of, bits of blood, blood Not there. Good riddance. No, oh, okay. wet. No, wet was, blood. Just, just. Oh, uh, just, just a wee bit of saltiness. I see. Yes, they had a. Uh, Falling out. I don't. I don't know if they would call it friendly, but a feud. A little bit of uh, back and forth, so it, to speak. It was a prank war. Yeah, oh, and it was. Oh, it was wetness. gradually becoming more funny. I'm sure not going to best. lie. Ah, oh, yes. Got me wet. Twice. Well, dear, there's much worse things than being wet. And she no, there's it not. Oh. Uh, she'll kind of bring you guys all drinks. Uh, at this point, they're on the house. Um, and you, have, you anyone who had separate adventures, you're able to fill in the rest of the group with your day. Uh, and as you're doing so, Densic, that's when you pull out the steel chest and kind of just like, ta-da. And as you do, you actually hear a... Like there's sound coming from the inside of it. Like, like to my knocking? Yeah, sounds like a tapping sound on the inside. There is no lock on there. I guess I should have looked to see if there nope. was a lock on it. <laughs> no lock. Gave me a chest just, and I didn't get the key. It's just latched. Uh, I'll open this latch. Open it up. Okay. Uh, as soon as you open it, an immense heat wave hits the entire bar. Like it went from like a comfortable like seventy five ish in here to like a hundred and ten. It is very hot in here now. Um, and like people start breaking out in sweats immediately. And Cal looks over at you guys being, you know, you guys. Uh, what is it you got there? Uh, do you mind? It's a bit stuffy in here now. Like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll close it and then I'll, I'll go up to my room in, in okay. privacy. <laughs> in privacy. Uh, Densick excuses himself and he kind of very as fast as Densic can waddle up the stairs he does and he gets to uh his room you open it once again and now that you're in a closed room it's even more <laughs> intense heat in here you're just like oh god this is unbearable <laughs> um but you uh you pull out the stone and 
it's not hot and you kind of test test it first it's not hot to the touch mm. um but it's uh more and it looks like rod krieger had attempted to kind of experiment with it a little bit before and she you can tell that there are marks on it from attempts to uh to see if it was malleable at all so you can see where uh things have been chipped away and uh even kind of like a smallish dent from you know the immense strength of that giant pounding on it with a hammer mm. um but it's at this time you hear the again and you realize that it's coming from the stone itself give me a uh, history check or arcana whichever one is better for you uh that's actually better that's 24 is amazing <laughs> uh so you're looking it over and over and you're just like the hell is like this has driven me for so long this red star falling what the hell is this thing and you keep like looking turning it over in your hands and just, it's very confusing and you're like wait wait you put it down on the bed and some words come to you in uh, in draconic some ancient words that you, you know you're, you're fluent in draconic but you've never thought of putting the word like putting words in this kind of sentence structure before mm. and as you say it very faint draconic symbols kind of appear on the stone itself and uh, you realize this to be a dragon egg Do I know what kind of dragon? Hmm. It is. Judging by the immense heat that it's giving off and the coloration of it, <laughs> would, you would guess this to be a. Originally, you would guess it to be a red dragon, which you're like, oh boy, not good. Yeah. Um, but you see that what you thought was red in, in the combination of the night sky slash morning sky, whatever that weird time the distortion happens, uh, in distance and like flame trail, uh, this actually would be a brass dragon. So a good dragon. Sweet. Uh, you know brass dragons to be uh, the most gregarious of true dragons. They crave conversation, sunlight, and very warm climates. It is. Yes, so I will I will take said egg, place it in the folds of my clothing, and uh, return to my friends as we're regaling and having eats and I will just I will sit down yeah you know, like plump down and I'll just smack the table and say I made a friend <gasps> and that's all I'm gonna say <laughs> congratulations oh, well done. yes you know I, I didn't know boy dragons could have eggs oh you, I didn't show you you the, haven't seen yeah he's, show not show you the egg. Egg. <laughs> he's not showing the egg he's not showing the egg I made a friend <laughs> Um, but yeah, you so you, you do some quick thinking. You're like, okay, uh, when it's born, it's gonna be very vulnerable, very weak. Um, sounds like some of your friends are staying here based on the conversation they told you. Probably wouldn't be able to get back through the the um, um, the dungeon by yourself, right? So. But you're like, you know, an enterprising bard such as myself could probably find a way to turn this new friend of mine and we could be business partners and we could make a pretty penny in a place like Skullport. Especially in the uh, Saraska's new bar bar that he's... <laughs> sure. <laughs> that I yeah. invested. Yes, a smart decision and a, and a welcome, wise decision from yourself to want to entertain at such a bar. Yes, it is fantastic. Perfect. So yeah, so Den Six Six back down on you guys and was like, um, uh, 
All right. Well, at least it's a, a at least it's a brass dragon. I was I was hoping that it wasn't going to be like the random spawn of Tiamat or something like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Uh... Um. Yes. If... Oh, if Densic would have told us, it would have been like, where would you like us to send the baby presents? <laughs> uh, no, Densic is keeping that secret to himself for right now. <clears throat> he will share. Uh, he will share someday. I'm sure that in, in one of these, in, in the, within the next couple weeks or months, I'll be sitting on a pillow in the middle of my room like keeping the egg warm and someone will accidentally not knock and walk in on me and I'll be like, uh. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so you guys are kind of all, uh, you kind of had your free drinks and uh, uh, Kal-El is coming back. She's like, should I, uh, should I bring about the, the dinner? And it's right at that moment that uh, you kind of everyone hears this faint humming sound. It almost sounds like uh, like in modern day you would hear like a like a live wire kind of charging up, and then a portal appears, and you get a brief glimpse of a city made completely out of brass. And once again, an immense wave of heat washes all over all of you. And out steps uh, a figure, once again hooded, but you see the glimpse of a tentacle underneath its hood, who very quickly makes his exit. Uh, Cal with a big smile over his face, uh, as in the right before the portal closes, you can see what looks to be a humanoid fox figure of some sort that uh, has a smile on its face as well. The portal closes. Cal, uh, Cal steps out, looking at all of you. Immediately throw my glass at, or throw my glass of fluid at him. <laughs> Just kind of hits a barrier, and slides down it. Cal, you're alive! Why are you all here? Um... Did you get married? Come on, we need to go to the new restaurant. This is not the best place in town to eat. Although it is a good tie for first place, looks at the owner. If you don't mind, I need to take them to the new restaurant. Wink. Oh! Well, I hadn't mentioned anything about it before, because I wasn't... I, your, your crowd didn't really look like the type that enjoys... Well... Oh, you uh, wouldn't I, think I, so, but they'll they'll enjoy it. All right. Well, uh, it seems your friend might know the way there. Drinks will be waiting for you when you get back for a little Hi. nightcap. And she winks at uh, Nim. Oh, I, I have something for you. And Nim produces the, the cake. And then um, from their coat, shows them a peek of the, the book. Oh, good on you for taking initiative, but... <laughs> I've got I've got the first edition in the back. <laughs> <laughs> and and Nim hands the book back to Shadow really quick. And you know, tries tries not to let anyone see it, but at the same time, Nim is blushing a bright blue. Openly Perfect. hand it to Barkeep. And can you get this back to the library then so uh, I can come back and get more books eventually? the fuck I look like your personal errand runner and she just hands it back to you you can make a trip and then she kind of looks up and she sees Cal just like impatiently tapping his foot at the door uh looks he like your friend wants wait. you to go I look, oh, at Nim and say, this book. I look at Nim and say oh I don't need that anymore and the scroll appears in my hand and then immediately turns to ash and I look at Shadow and say oh by the way I don't do water anymore my eyes are blazing embers. <laughs> I've been to other places now. You're safe. Cal starts leading you through the city uh, to... And he just kind of twists and winds and goes kind of the opposite side of this half of the city you guys have been exploring today. Uh, and you come across a building and even at this late hour of the night... There are construction workers kind of working on the outside of it a little bit, but it does seem to be open and business is happening. Uh, the lights are on in the inside and Cal, almost with the most excitement you've ever seen him before, kind of rushes to the door and opens it. 
Did he have that much excitement before? I'm feeling like this is a lot of energy for Cal. I mean, so his when eyes Scott are glowing. Left, he kind of mm. got really sad. M maybe he found Hops. As you say that, and you're discussing, like, why is he so excited as you're walking into the restaurant? You get the distinct smell of broth and salty goodness. And you see a large tabaxi, bandana across his head, baggy cut off shorts, and uh, leaning against the wall, a large staff with some pots on it. Uh, this one is most excited to see his friends again. Please sit and enjoy the latest establishment of Sprouting Hops Noodle Shop. And everyone sits and down, you? has a very large bowl of noodles, and we will the fade door out swings there. shut. Yes, the the camera kind of slowly starts panning out from the table to the whole restaurant to through the same entrance door that you came through. The doors close. And the sign with the force of the, of the of the slam moves from open to closed. Hey, new news. And that's where we'll end not just tonight's session, but Dungeon of the Mad Mage. Yes, you heard that correctly, my friends and family out there watching and listening and enjoying and partaking. We will be moving to a different campaign. Not next week. We're going to take a break because next Friday is Christmas. Uh, we will be... Uh, so we'll take a break. Starting New Year's Day, we're going to start a new adventure based in the wonderful land of Scarred Lands. If you've not heard of Scarred Lands before, it is a wonderful supplement and environment and world and entire uh, system almost of itself uh, based on 5e rules made by Onyx Path Publishing. Uh, we are uh, totally in, uh, in love with it and so much so that we have decided to shift to that uh, system. So uh, more to be on that. Uh, we're gonna. It's gonna be a longer campaign. Uh, we're going to uh, incorporate character building. So our first session will actually be a session zero, where you'll actually get to see us make our characters live. So make sure you tune into that. You'll get some great looks into our characters' backstories, uh, and you know how they might know one another, and what's going to be driving them forward. So you can really uh, find yourself the character that you identify with, and kind of root for them uh, the entire time you're watching. Uh, but yes, unfortunately. The dungeon grows dark for the last time, and my vision fades as the magic is spent and the scrying orb goes blank. It has been a pleasure dividing the story to you, listener. We hope you enjoyed what you saw and heard as much as we enjoy performing it, performing it for you. Let's hear from our players now. Once again, your name, handle, your character's name, and where people can find you outside of Local Tales. I am Dwayne, at Made of Kimchi on the internet, and I, for the last time, have played Densic Rothanol. The now father bard. And I am Sharask, better known as J3 Billion. Uh, and uh, it has been an absolute pleasure playing my character tonight. And uh, I'll see you guys on Sunday, 10 o'clock, for Bacon and Zombies. Never had to step away, but ever is in every show that Corporal Tales does. You can catch them everywhere all the time. And on the internet, it's changing ever. And I am Eldritch Echoes. My next show will be Sunday, where I'll be running uh, the next session of The Lurking Silence in Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition. Hi, uh, Tiffany, also known as Pinky. You can find me on Twitter at Pinky underscore 88. And the next time you'll be able to see me, will be on, I believe, Wednesday with John. It will be the last episode, I believe. Correct. Um, Pugmire. Pugmire. They stole Yuletide. <laughs> Bring us the Christmas tree, dang it. Finally get that damn tree. And I am Devin. I have been Shadow, and you can find me online at uh, sort of sullied and it has been awesome alright thank you I have been patty shaked underscore and it will be two more weeks before I can summon the ability within me to create a new and entirely fantastical realm and story for you but in the meantime I encourage you please watch Warple Tales and all of our other shows which includes 
Hold on, my calendar is broken. <gasps> the guest. Here we go. It's loading now. Which includes uh, Sunday will be the Tales of Terror and Damnation, as well as Bacon and Zombies in the morning. Monday, we'll continue our Cyberpunk story. Tuesday will be our Contagion Chronicle. Wednesday, Pirates, How the Pirates Stole Your Time. And then Thursday and Friday, we'll be off to celebrate Christmas, as we wish you and yours a very Merry Christmas as well. All right, the true fans, we shall vote. Our players will each nominate one other player, but new to Vorpal Tales, you, the audience, can vote for your favorite player as well. Uh, I don't think we're going to do any rewards to carry over to the next game, so we'll, we're going to start everything completely new. So just kind of, uh, and we'll even go just because it is our last session. I'm going to, I'm going to just go ahead and GM approve this. You may vote for your favorite person tonight, and then, you know, if you had a favorite moment in the campaign as a whole, please feel free to share that as well. Oh, way to drop that. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, so vote for this evening is going to go to John for <laughs> establishing yourself well in the city of Skullport. <laughs> <laughs> um, overall in the campaign, uh, probably to ever for the multiple changes that they made to not only their character, but sticking with it as far as the backstory goodness. You know what I mean? Words I can't do. Perfect. Yeah, you don't have to award it to a particular person if you don't want. I, I know that's, that's great if you do. Um, you can't just pick a favorite moment in general if you want. But oh, okay. Perfect. Thank you, Dwayne. Um, tonight, I'm having a hard time picking tonight. I do know the uh, the, the moment in the campaign, which I, I, I loved a lot and I had uh, with... Uh, Tyler and Devin here like I, I love the back and forth and kind of like the joy and the fun that that they both brought to this and the, the frustration from Devin's side as he absolutely got wrecked 100% of the time uh, <laughs> never mess with mages when no, you have yeah. no magical powers <laughs> never. Fair. it is 100% Fair. the rule 100% <laughs> never um, follow it and then I'm gonna give mine to Dense, my mine to Densic tonight for uh, like just just not giving a shit when he's like, oh yeah, this guy is gonna work six years. Done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still <have> my bag. <laughs> you don't care. You don't give a fuck. <laughs> Ever. That was, a, that was an awesome. Sorry. Ever votes for all of you because Ever could possibly choose their favorite, and they love you all equally. Mm. Aww. <laughs> Tyler gives tonight's vote to Shadow for being his water buddy and I got to put a wet cat picture over you for like 20 minutes and you didn't notice <laughs> and my overall vote goes to Patty for the versatile voices my personal favorite was the hags you put some love into those baby yes thank you yeah. I guess, yeah, that's more appropriate than or should I say thank you <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask Patty, how much water did you have to drink afterwards? To so, so yeah, I so I have done hags before with the same voice. I love doing hags; so, like they're one of my favorite characters NPCs to play. But yes, it destroys my throat to do that voice. <clears throat> like I, it takes several of these to <laughs> fix the throat. So I believe it. Anger. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you for your dedication, sir. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Very much appreciated. Okay, so it's my turn. Um, I, I honestly, I don't think I could pick like any one person. Like, if I had to pick a vote, um, but in terms to like of my favorite moment, uh, I genuinely loved. Uh, I wish, I wish ever was here to hear this, um, but I genuinely loved. When we were stuck, like uh, when we were dealing with those traps, and and Izzy literally is just yeeting Nim mm. consecutive. It was thing was like four was times awesome. in a row. It's like yeet. Okay, let me hop over. Whoop. Okay, hey, you need to you need to go. Okay, let's do this. Yeet. Okay, like it was just it was just great. I loved it. I loved how like Patty's just like okay, yeah, let, let's do with this. Ever's like. 
cow? You're so tiny. <laughs> uh, si I, as Yoda I, would say, size matters not. That is very true. <laughs> and tonight, I'm going to throw my award to uh, Tyler for taking the water battle, which I could not possibly win, gave up on, and you just said, yeah, still going. <laughs> <laughs> and my favorite moment of the campaign <laughs> is the goblin scamming the rogue. <laughs> mm. It made me so happy when you didn't even insight check or anything. You're just like, oh, oh I yeah. know. Oh, should I play advance? That sounds legit. Okay. Yeah, totes. <laughs> As a player, totally new. As a character, wouldn't have done it. It's a goblin. They're stupid. How the hell are they supposed to try and trick me? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yes. I love that. Oh. Perfect. Yes. Uh, those moments from tonight. Those moments from the campaign as a whole were quite amazing. Um, I must say, all of you had great moments that uh, I will forever remember from this campaign as well. And I must say that I enjoyed telling it and playing my small role as your facilitator for it as well. Uh, to you, the audience, we hope you enjoyed tonight's story. We look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Remember, two weeks uh, for Scarred Lands, where we'll do our session zero. And uh, until next time, may we just guide your path. Stay safe. Stay awesome. Stay adventurous. Make good choices. And a very Merry Christmas to you and yours. <laughs> <laughs>